Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to the inauguration of Jivanananda Festival. So this is quite a late evening here in the UK. And those who are watching from India, Bangladesh, this is quite late evening, actually. Late afternoon here, but late evening. And those who are watching from different parts of the globe, a warm welcome again to this unique festival of literature, music, and dance that predominantly aims to introduce a phenomenal poet of Bengali literature of 20th century in the Western literary scene. Some of you perhaps are aware of Shodo's activity. Shodo predominantly focuses on promoting focuses to promote Indian classical and more essentially global music here in the UK. But also it promotes at the beauty of world literature, uh, collaborating with different art organizations, uh, purely from, from the UK, and but also from international arena. So this is, uh, Shodo actually has a phenomenal journey in the promotion of uh, serious art, literature, and music here in the UK. And it, it is a journey of 10 years so far. It works uh, with many uh, prominent musicians of the globe. Uh, and also uh, it works uh, in many prestigious venues in the UK. That includes Royal Festival Hall, Courage Theatre Theater Hall, House of Commons, and many, many, many prestigious venues all around the UK. With the name to promote the beauty of South Asian arts uh, and music. Those who loved this journey and supported this journey, many, many thanks from the core of our heart uh, during this festival. And as you know, Shodo has taken this initiative to introduce uh, one of the best, one of the purest poet, poet of Bengal uh, in the Western literary scene after Tagore. So when it comes to Indian literature, we know that in Western uh, literary arena, we always connect Tagore. But Jivananda Dash is a, not only a Bengali uh, major poet, but also a major poet of the world uh, and quite contemporary and quite powerful as equally uh, in some extent, uh, equally powerful. Uh, of Western modern poets, that includes even T.S. Eliot. So we will try to promote, we will try to uh, focus on his works, uh, and that will be that will be presented by many uh, world-leading uh, academicians uh, today. Uh, many performers will offer some reinterpretation of his works uh, through uh, collaboration with other art forms that include dance, for an example, uh, photography, for an example, and more essentially, uh, looking at his works, looking at his poetry, uh, shedding a new light on by some talented academicians, researchers. This is an honor uh, to have the Minister of Education, uh, Dr. Deepu Modi as part of this festival. Many, many, many thanks to the minister, honorable minister, uh, for joining as part of this festival. And it is an honor also uh, for us to be able to start uh, this festival with her inaugurating speech. But let me also introduce uh, the other speakers. 
uh, they have also quite a trackable history, trackable uh, contribution in academia, and more essentially, uh, Jivananda Dash's work. Let me start with Shamim Reza, a, a, an award-winning poet, a, a researcher, uh, and also the director of uh, Bangabundu Institute of Comparative Literature and Culture, a, a versatile writer. Many, many thanks, Shamim Raja, for joining as part of this inaugurating inauguration session of the festival, and a warm welcome to today's session. Thank you, Pesha. I Before I move on to uh, introduce our speakers, uh, I also would like to uh, share our pleasure that this session is being presided over by a scholar, an academic, a social scientist, uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Borishal University. Many, many, many thanks, uh, uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Sadikul Arifin, sir, uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Borishal University. Many thanks for joining and many thanks for agreeing to uh, preside over uh, this this inaugurating session and a warm welcome to today's session. We also have a, a researcher and an academic professor, Muhasin uh, the director of Jivananda Research Center of Borishal University. Many, many thanks again uh, for joining and a warm welcome to today's session. We have uh, Johor Shin Mojumdar, a, an award-winning poet, a, one of the major poets of contemporary time, a, a phenomenal essayist and a scholar, uh, the professor at Kaji Najrul University in India. Johor Shin Mojumdar, many thanks for joining uh, at the inauguration session. Uh, we, uh, I'm personally looking forward for your keynote speech uh, as part of this session. This is also an honor to have uh, Sri Omitananda Dash, uh, a scholar and an author, and also uh, the nephew of uh, Jivanananda Dash. It is an honor to have you as part of this session, Omidda. Many, many thanks for joining as part of this uh, inaugurating session and a warm welcome. We have uh, our regular, uh, our friend, our regular, quite regular face, the editor of the Granthi poet Shamim Shahan. Many, many thanks for your relentless support, tireless support for uh, show those activities. And many thanks for whatever you're doing as part of the Granthi uh, in relation to the promotion of world literature. Uh, thank you very much, Shamim Shan, for joining as part of the series, as part of this uh, session, and a warm welcome. Thank you, Kaisar. This is a great pleasure for the Granthi to collaborate with Shodha for this important festival. This is important because it introduced a great Bengali poet and fiction writer, Jibananda Dash, to the Western literary since thought some unique interpretation. This interpretation are not just rereading his works, shedding a new light on, but also rendering unique interpretations using other art forms. For an example, interpreting his poetry thought painting, music, and photography. These two days are in fact, uh, absolutely fest for literature loving audience for all across the world. I look forward to listening to talks and performance. Many thanks to all of the audience who are watching and supporting. Please share the link in your timeline and make this session available for your friends to watch. Thank you, Kaisa. Thank you, 
Shamim Chan, let us, uh, before we move on to the academic uh, interpretation of Jivarando, uh, uh, like I mentioned, we are so honored to have the Honorable Minister of Education uh, of Bangladesh. Uh, if you kindly, uh, Dr. Deepu Moni, if you kindly uh, leave a short speech, uh, inaugurating speech, before you move on to the academic uh, talks on Jivan Honorable, the Honorable Mr. Minister Mr. of Education, Dr. Deepu Moni. Uh, respected Chair, distinguished participants, friends, um, it is my great pleasure to be able to participate in a virtual platform that involves renowned participants from Bangladesh and abroad, a platform that includes intellectuals and thinkers working in the broad spectrum of literary and cultural field. I'm also uh, happy that the University of Borishal is a part of this webinar. A few days back, the university hosted another webinar on, to mark the birth centenary of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, our father of the nation. And I had the uh, privilege to attend that virtual session and talk about the greatest son that this land has ever produced. The reason I'm particularly looking forward to this two-day webinar is because it brings into focus the life and works of Jibon Anandu Dash another great Bangali uh, individual whose contribution to Bangla literature in particular and world literature in general forms a cultural bridge between India and Bangladesh. My special thanks uh, go to Shodho Society of Poetry and Indian Music for working in collaboration with a number of international universities to make this literary event take place. It is so heartwarming to observe experts, intellectuals, and literary connoisseurs across countries and continents to come together in this virtual platform to exchange their views and critical opinion on Jivananand Dash, one of the most brilliant, enigmatic, and creative minds of the 20th century. As, um, as the Minister of Education, I believe, collaborative undertakings of such kind and magnitude should be made imperative for all institutions of higher studies, particularly those that are striving for academic excellence and global standard. This government, led by our Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, uh, has made a very strong point to spare no pain where uh, the digitalization of education and production of quality research work are concerned. From that perspective, such collaborative endeavor, virtual or other, in this COVID afflicted days, will serve as an exemplary instance for other bodies of higher education to follow. From a cultural point of view, Jivananda Dash and Burishal are almost synonymous uh, with one another. However, to be true to his stature as a literary icon, the development of his literary genius is a trajectory that spans countries and cultures. His poetry represents the beauty of a land defined by the scenic charms of rivers, green woods, creatures from the natural world and the unadorned, and the idyllic lifestyle of simple folks. These are timeless features of his poetry that are in consonance with the vibrant and living pulse of Bangali culture in its entirety. Unfortunately, Jibanand Dash, a versatile talent, was evaluated more after his premature death than before. The more are his works studied, the more it becomes astonishingly evident that he made contributions to almost all branches of art. I feel so happy to learn that uh, a spirit of uh, inquisitiveness and artistic discovery inform the organization of this webinar, where many ardent scholars have gathered to reinterpret the works of his great of this great artist from uh, stimulatingly new angles that include music, dance, and photography, to name uh, a few of them. I wish uh, this webinar every success. I believe this collaborative endeavor among Shodho Society of Poetry, the University of Borishal and others 
will be a landmark event for Bangladesh and provide impetus to our commitment to continue and reinforce cultural exchanges between Bangladesh and India to historical neighbors of the subcontinent in the days ahead. In these troubled days, when orthodoxies of different hues and colors are raising their dogmatic heads at every slightest opportunity, nothing can be purer, more secular, civilized, and assuring to the soul than a discussion on poetry that touches the deepest chord of our Bangali existence. Um, with these words and wishing everyone on this birth centenary of our father of the nation, Mujib Borsho, and on the year of the golden jubilee of our war of independence, um, I declare this uh, event, this great event uh, open. Thank you. Joy Bangla, joy Bangabuntu. May Bangladesh live forever. Many, 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 many thanks. And the Honorable Minister of Education of Bangladesh for this very insightful talk. What a great start. What a great start. Uh, thanks again uh, for joining and thanks again for this profound uh, tribute to Jibonanda through your speech. And we are really uh, honored uh, the way uh, Bangladesh, uh, the way you related to Bananda actually, because Yolanda is truly the bridge between two Bengals. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. And please, those who are watching, please do share. Do share in your timeline. Do share this live stream in your timeline. This is uh, streaming live in Facebook and also in YouTube. Uh, and if you, especially in this difficult time, people need to focus on uh, the positivity of art, the positivity of literature, the positivity of music. So through sharing, you are also helping your friends to focus on something that can enrich them uh, meaningfully. So uh, we are moving on to uh, our next speaker, uh, the first speaker, uh, Professor Mohammed Mohsinuddin. Uh, Mohsinuddin, uh, we are like uh, the Minister of the Education, Honorable Minister mentioned, uh, we, we are so proud to, uh, to be able to collaborate with some universities, uh, and that, is, that includes Borishal University, uh, Young University, Lee Street University here in the UK, and also uh, the Department of Bengali Literature Department of Gadi University. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor Mohammed Mosiruddin, uh, who is also the director of uh, Kazi Nojru, uh, sorry, director of Jivananda Das uh, Research Center in Borisha. But let me also find out a bit more. Um, one second. So Dr. Mahmoud Mohsinuddin is a professor of English literature at the University of Borisha, Bangladesh. His pen name is Mahmoud Mohsin. He also works as the director of the World Dash Research Center established in the premise of the University of Borisha. He is the, he is the editor of Danshiri, a reputable little map of Bangladesh. He has translated into Bangla a number of short stories of Latin America and Africa, and a number of critical works on Chiru Archive, Taib Salik, and uh, Carpentier, one of my favorite writers, Alejo Carpentier, a Latin American uh, fiction. Uh, very interestingly, he is also, uh, he has translated Shakespeare's uh, The Tempest and Macbeth into the dialect of Borisha. His original literary works are all in Bengali except some research essays, one book titled uh, Juan Rumpo's contribution to magic realism, uh, one of the architects of magic realism, uh, Latin American writer. Oh, 
you have done a tremendous job, uh, uh, Mr. D Professor Dean. So if you kindly, uh, if you kindly uh, start your own interpretation about the modern law, and like I mentioned, like I mentioned before, uh, we are truly honored to have uh, run the research center as part of this. Thank you. Thank you, dear Mr. Kaisen, uh, for presenting me with so many glorious words, which I don't deserve actually. Would it be possible to uh, come a bit nearer, to a bit closer to the okay. device? Okay. So now, do, do you hear me? A, a bit better now, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Honorable Chair, Professor Dr. Sadiqul Arifin, the Vice Chancellor of Bhutan University, and the Chair of this inaugural session of Jumanandu Fest, arranged by Shaudu from England, in collaboration with several institutions and organizations, including Jumanandu Das Research Center of Bhutan University. The Chief Guest of the session, Dr. Dipumoni MP, Honorable Minister of Education, the Government of Bangladesh. The keynote speaker, Professor Johar Shin Majumdar, a great poet and critic, and also the professor, a professor of Kobe Nozrud University, West Bengal. Professor Shamim Reja of Jahangir University. Uh, Glorious poet of the present time in Bangladesh. Mr. Omid Das, the, uh, having the glorious relationship with Jivanandu Das, that is the nephew of Jivanandu. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shamim Shahan, and the audience, and especially. J. Mohammed Kaiser, Director of Shodhu UK, and all the discussions, discussions and online participants. Please accept my heartfelt love and the best compliments from the birthplace of Jivananda Dash. The opportunity to speak from this platform is an honor for me, and I do dedicate this honor to this glorious birthplace of Jivananda Dash. I felt the greatness of Bodhishal as the glorious birthplace of Jivananda Dash several times in my life. In 2008, I attended a seminar at Tiripura University in India. Every time I met a stranger there and told that I was from Bodhishal, the first response from him or her was a word of sheer wonder. Wow, you are from the land of Jivananda Dash. This happened not in India only, in Australia, Malaysia, Nepal, Saudi Arabia, wherever I met a Bangladesh speaking unknown person. Most often it was a common pleasurable greeting for me that I hailed from the land of Bangladesh, for land of the birthplace of Jivananda. These experiences solidify my belief that Jivananda Dash is now simply the identity mark of Bodhisattva. Therefore, to hail from the soil of Borishal is a matter of pride. And it is just a pride. It is not just a pride. It means something more. Two, concerning the understanding of Jivanandu's words. To be from the soil of Jivanandu or to be on the soil of Jivanandu makes one's access to Jivanandu's world easy and insightful. The imagery and the phraseology Jivanandu has used in portrayal of the landscape of Borishal, in poetic presentation of the life here, are not always very easy to grasp. They have poetic contours. To understand them and to savor them poetically, one needs an insight into the nature and tradition of Borishal. I would like to give you just one example. 
in the poem known as avara shiva fire in english i shall return again there is an oft quoted line avara shiva ami banglar nodi mat khet bhalobeshe jalangir thiwe pecha banglar e shobuj korun dangai in english i will come lovingly again to bengal river fields farmlands to the green wistful shores of bengal lapped by jalangi's waves from fokralam's translation all the translators have all the translators have all treated jalangi as the name of a river but is there any river in odisha or anywhere in bengal called jalangi no there is no such river then what is jalangi this is a very difficult question for the readers outside Purishan. But this is a very easy question for the readers of Purishan. The readers of Purishan know that there is a small river called Jangalia at Jalokati. Jangalia and Tanshri have met at a place called Pagri of Rajapur. the people here know that jivanananda has very artistically lyricized the name jangalia by transforming it into jalangi this transformation is fantastic because the formation of the word suggests that it is something whose ongo that is body holds jaw that is water the transformation binds together the proper name and the sense as a common noun this matchless poetic power of jivanandu can be felt only by a reader who knows that there is a river called jangadi and can critically infer the process of transformation and lyricization by jivanandu and that reader obviously should be one from bolsha i can cite many such examples to show how to be how to be from bolsha helps to read you know on this world more critically and more insightfully i'll present just one more in 2013 one of our celebrated writers mihishan gupta presented in a symposium at odisha university a very new and novel idea about the style of jivanand this poetic narrative he explored and analyzed a number of jivanand's poems to show how the poetic narrative of jivanand owes to the narrative of the folk tales of the southern bengal stylistically folk tales are here called porun katha to discern the stylistic aspects of porun katha in jivanand's poetry one obviously needs to have adequate familiarity with porun katha A reader outside Odisha is not expected to have that familiarity. Mahishan Gupta has that familiarity, and therefore, it was easy for him to discover and show the amount of depth of Jivanananda's poetic narrative to folk tales, that is, to Porun Kotha. With these privileges of the people of Odisha to understand and interpret Jivanananda's works, these people have a binding responsibility to read. to rediscover and reinterpret the works of jivanandu and to disseminate the findings globally jivanandu research center of odisha university was established with this view in mind the center has already funded a number of research projects on jivanandu's works and arranged one international seminar on jivanandu in 2019 a few research reports have already been published in deputed research journals the center is thankful to sodo that they have accepted the center as a partner to arrange this festival a special thanks for our vice chancellor for connecting us to sodo and to the director of sodo mr t m mohammed kaiser for his appreciable venture of viewing jibrando from multiple angles thanks for all the audience online many 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 thanks to professor mohasinuddin uh, 
and thank you very much for all the support um, you have done, and especially Boisha University has done uh, to promote uh, the festival to the core audiences that we targeted. Uh, and also this is a, um, especially Shodu is very grateful to the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Borussia University. Uh, I, this is such a pleasure uh, to be able to work with uh, Sadiq Nelson Sir. Uh, I can ruminate the memory of my, uh, especially uh, actually student life in uh, Shadala University. We work together, uh, especially he's such a great patronizer of cultural movement and he's a firm believer of cultural movement that he started while he was at Shadala University. And he continued uh, with this uh, to the, uh, in the academic areas he worked in. Especially as a social scientist, he has so many uh, journals that, that were published in, uh, published internationally, nationally, uh, and he's also a published author, uh, works on empowerment of the poor, which is very uh, vulnerable area, uh, definitely, and very uh, important area to work with. But also he's such a progressive uh, person, progressive cultural activist, beliefs in cultural activism, and it's such a pleasure, it was such a pleasure to see him uh, as, uh, as the Vice Chancellor of Borussia University. Many, many thanks, uh, sir, uh, for helping, supporting, and whatever you have done uh, in Shadow University. And it is such a pleasure to see you are doing the same wherever you, uh, you are going to. Uh, the, you believe in progressive culture, and spreading, preaching uh, progressive culture to the grassroots level of the community. So uh, our next speaker is uh, poet Shamim Reza. So Shamim Reza, first of all, is a great friend. I should start with this, a wonderful friend. Uh, if, you, if someone finds Shamim Reza as a good friend, perhaps he or she must he, he or she you don't have anything else. He can, she or she can manage uh, without having anything else as long as Shamim Raja is a friend. So Shamim Raja is a Bengali poet, a, a phenomenal story writer and literary critic. Apart from this particular area, uh, he's, he is also writing novels depicting the pre-colonial setting. His unique and diverse writing style, portrayal of surreal beauty, mingling of classical concept with modern flavor help him to be a notable poet. Shamim uh, has published eight collections of poetry and one short story book. He also ended, edited African literary collection one and two. He received four awards for poetry writing Award 2007, Binoy Majumdar Shammanana 2014, Banglar Mok 2016, and Kovita Ashram Award 2019. He has long career in literary journalism. Uh, he is currently teaching uh, comparative literature and culture at Jangir University now. Uh, uh, he is the founder director of Bangabundu Institute of Comparative literature and culture. Uh, many, many thanks, Shamim, uh, for uh, helping and supporting this festival in meaningful ways. Uh, now, over to you, if you kindly offer your interpretation, your own Thank interpretation you. of the world. Thank you, Kaiser. My heartfelt thanks and Nabu Falguni, which is a new spring. Greetings to my favorite writer, T.M. Kaiser. Poet and editor, Shamim Shahan. I also wish to extend my thanks the organizer of Shodhu Society of Poetry and Indian Music. In February, 
it snows in europe and here in bangladesh we celebrate spring the inter country is covered by flowers and songs of spring birds following our national poet kazi nazrul islam and jibranand dash were also born in this beautiful year 1899 i am also remembering world most honored philosophical writer horeli vores america's most famous and popular writers ernest hemingway irish english novelist elizabeth buin chinese writer lao xi spanish poet emilio perades and japanese novelist yasunari kawabata and scottish writer bruce marshall all this world most honorable and celebrated writer born 1899 it is very amazing to think that when we are celebrating spring here with a spring love poem written by jibanananda another group of people in another country in europe simultaneously celebrating jibanananda festival today as well in this wondrous world when some countries are celebrating a spring festival another part of this world is covered in snow sometimes world cultural celebration mirror the celebration of the beauty of mother nature of course though there are huge social political and economic difference between different parts of the world this bright all difference our world is also tied up or interconnected with invisible threads we are lucky professor was hard week at st mostly is present today here not and honorable uh, education minister of government republic of bangladesh dipumoni mp is our chief guest i am very much delighted today with the presence of vice chancellor professor dr sadiq ularifin borisal university poet and professor zahur shin mazumdar kazi nazrul university india poet and professor mohammad mohsin director of jibanand research center borisal university nephew of jibanand dash omita omitanand dash classical vocalist kuel vetacharya and sharud badu shubhashish banerji i got the sons to join with all of you and i am in rest myself by participating in such a glorious event rabindranath tagore is one of the major poet in the modern euro asian history of poetry and i believe after rabindranath the most read and rescued poet in both bangla is jibranand dash i would like to discuss how during modern european poetry era jibranand began his own unparalleled lonely journey with his unique narrative lyrical talents and observational style i will give few examples of that but first before that me let me read from ts eliot most read traditional and individual talents no poet no artist of any art has his complete meaning alone his significance his appreciation and his relation to the dead poets and artists is important you cannot value him alone 
you must set him for contrast and comparison among the dead. I mean, this as a principle of aesthetics, not merely historical criticism. We see unique similarities in both poets, cultural, philosophical, and poetical views. I selected 20 poetry of years, W.V. years, and 20 poetry of Zivananda Das to show the similarities, but today we do not have enough time to do that. And of course, I believe if I try to do that, my audience will lose their passions. But shortly, I will bring years to poetry as references. In the interest of time, as it wouldn't take that long, I am showing the similarities with years where the expressed his deep pain and sorrow as a devoted lover. The O oh, Karlu, cry no more in the air or only to the water in the west because your crying brings to my mind passion don't eyes and long heavy hair that was shaken out over my breast. This is enough evil in the crying of wind. This is year's poetry. Every word is expressing and pointing out the deep pain of a sad lover. Here is the success of years. He successfully draws the picture of a sad lover using the symbol of a bird. The sad lover is telling the bird, do not cry when you will fly again over the water to return the west. Do not cry. Your cry brings the beautiful storytelling of beautiful long hair and depth of deep brings eyes. Reading years poetry make us sad. We see very similarities and with the poetry and Jibunarando. Here I am reciting few stanza from Jibunarando for his honor in Bangla. Hai chil, shunali danar chil, ei bhije megher dupure, tumi ar kedona ko ude ude, dhan shirino di tir pashe, tumar karnar shure, beter folir mototar mlan chuk moneashe, pitibir raj karna der moto sheje cholegache ruk ne dure, abar tahake kanu deke ano, ke hai, hidai kure, beduna jagate halovashe. Then I am translating now in English for the understanding of English audience. O kite, the kite with golden wings in the snow, moist and cloudy, please, you do not cry, cry and fly besides river, Dhanshri, the strains of your cries remind me of her bell eyes alike can bury. Alike all princess she has gone to far with all her elegance. Why remind me again of her who away loves to dig one's own heart to awake pains? Oh kite, the kite with golden wing in this noon, moist and cloudy, please do not cry and fly besides rivers Dhanshi. Translated by Dipankar Choudhury. Both poet Yers and Jivunarando expresses the girl's eyes in a similar manner. 
For years, the bard's name is Kalu and Zibunangdu used the bard name Chil. Brahma philosophy Zibunangdu gave here Keha Hidoi Kura Beduna Jagata Palovashe. Who away love to dig one's own heart to away pains. Here is the difference between years and Jivanananda. This is Brahmo philosophical. He expresses his philosophy in a poetic manner. Jivanananda was heavily influenced by ancient Brahmo religion and Brahmo philosophy, which he inherited from his family. Comparison given by the remark of Zagdirida is strongly applicable in this context. It is productive writing called both forth by the original text. Poets of the 30s in our country try to combine and adjust their views with the poets of the West. It is also mentionable that they followed Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot's poetic thinking and lyrical similarities. But I believe Zivunanand is more influential and powerful in this poetic context. Michael Modishudan deeply and carefully followed very famous and classical European literary figure too. And same is true for Rabindranath Tagore and Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay. Even today, many of our poets are also following foreign poets and writers. They are following from Baudelaire to French poets, T.S. Eliot to Ezra Pound, not Jivananundo. But now it is time to focus on Jivananundo more to develop our poetic and literary world. He has seen the beauty of the nature of Bangla and Bharat Barsha in a different view. And this is his extraordinary uniqueness of the views. There is distinguishably Jivananda defined and established the beauty of the nature of Bangla and its philosophy. Today, the world knows Edgar Allan Poe defined and symbolized years and allured to the West in an exclusive interview with me, Kurelui Boris translator, Professor Norman Thomas D. Governi told me, you people did not support enough to open the door to him to see the world. If I would in your age, I would translate only Jivananda Das. Our time is limited and I will not take extra time. I would rather love to hear from my favorite poets and writers. Before finishing, I will recite a few of my favorite lines from Jivananda. But every night I look and see, yes, a blind and pulsed owl come. Sita Punda Ashatta Brands, Blank Halais and Say, Old Lady Moon has sunk in the flood, has she marvelous. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor and Poet Shamim Reza, uh, for your own interpretation uh, on Jivanananda. Uh, uh, so let us move on to uh, our next speaker. Next speaker is Sri Omitananda Dash, uh, the nephew of Jivananda Dash, and also an author and a, the member of the editorial board of Shandesh. This is a great honor to have uh, Sri Omitananda Dash as part of the inaugurating session of the festival. Many, many thanks. Uh, Omidda for joining and a warm welcome to uh, this, uh, this session of the festival. And now this is over to you, but if you kindly unmute yourself, we can't hear you. 
Uh, if you kindly unmute yourself from it there. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. So you need to unmute. Let me see whether I can send you the... No, unfortunately, I can't... Uh, yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, you can hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, dear Mr. Kaiser and our celebrated uh, guests, and the audience around the world. I shall make a sh short statement about my bag, a connection with Jivanandu. And if you kindly ruminate your memories or some kind of anecdotes, perhaps. No, no, yes. If you have heard from, Is there? If you have heard from others uh, or other family members. He was almost a recluse. He had very few friends. His nickname was Milu, and he was close only to his younger brother, Oshokanando Bebul, and the uh, youngest sister, Suchorita Kuku. As I was very young at the time of his death, much of what I know about him is learned from my father, Oshokanando, mother, Nolini, and aunt Shucharita. As a teenager, Jivananda started to write poems both in Bengali and in English. Some of the Bengali poems have been included in his first anthology, Jhora Palo. He never tried to publish any of his English poems, rightly deciding that they were inferior to his Bengali poems. He developed a unique style of poetry around 1930 when he was unemployed for a few years. While he was struggling to earn a livelihood, he observed the effects of the global depression that, was, that also affected the Indian economy at the time. In his second anthology, Dhushor Pandulipi, published in 1935, he showcased this new style of poetry. Many of the poems portray the harsh reality around him and lament the prevails of those who are left behind by the competitive so-called modern world. In 1934, when he was in the ancestral home in Borishal for a few weeks, he was possessed by a strange mood and in about a month, he wrote scores of sonnets expressing love for Bengal and expressing fears about the future of Bengal. These were published in a book that became famous as Rupashi Bhag. During his lifetime, only a tiny fraction of his poems were published. probably 269 in all, of which only 162 were included in poetry anthologies. Many of the poems, other poems, were scattered in various places, including the unpublished manuscripts lying in National Library. After his daughter Monjustri's death in 1995, I recovered a suitcase full of his writings from the loft of an apartment of a family friend, though these two remain unpublished for many more years. Devi Prashad Bandopadhyay had collected the poems published in different little magazines, and by 2008, the number of his known poems increased to about 800. Most devoted editor of the poet's works, Dr. Bhumendra, late Dr. Bhumendra Guho, took up the task of deciphering and editing his works. He obtained manuscripts lying with me, as well as copies of those at the National Library. The publisher Pratikhan printed the hitherto unknown poems, and the number of his poems has now increased to 1800. He was working in Borishal between 1935 and 1946, 
the most productive period of his literary life. In all, he wrote 21 novels, 108 short stories, scores of articles, and many diaries. However, none of his uh, prose works, pro prose fiction, was published during his lifetime. Pratikhan has published most of the works edited by Dr. Guho. The poet has published some of the articles, but the remaining articles and diaries were also published after posthumously. What is most remarkable is that even when his life was deeply unhappy, he went on writing the stories and articles and novels without trying to get any of them published. Most of his fiction had a stream of consciousness style that was probably inspired by James Joyce, who was gaining fame at the time. The stories did not have any clear beginning or end as Jivananda believed that uh, fiction should follow the reality which does not have any beginning or end. He showed some stories to some a, a friend, a reputed poet, and he said they were not fit for publication. Jivananda did not agree, but he kept quiet and went on writing. His poems and fiction, in addition to the human and natural elements of nature indicate a deep knowledge of history and current events. Many of the poems are about wars and riots that occurred during his lifetime. A few poems even comment on the communist internationals of 1920s and about the failure of the powerful nations to form an effective United Nations in 19. I will not continue for further as I am not really a literary critic. Thank you. Now your participation was uh, so appreciable, uh, Omidda. Many thanks, many Thank thanks. Uh, definitely would like to listen, would like to hear from you more, uh, especially on your personal anecdotes that you perhaps uh, learned, gained from your own little experience, but. Again, you gain from uh, the experiences from other family members. But perhaps uh, uh, very soon we'll sit again and next year in the festival uh, here in the UK, we'd like to invite uh, many guests uh, from different parts of the globe. Uh, let me uh, thank you very much again for your beautiful input. But before I move on to the next speaker, which is keynote speaker, Professor and poet uh, uh, Jogoshin Mojumda, let me give a brief summary of this festival uh, for the audiences who are uh, watching us. So this is a uh, this is the inauguration session, and then the next session is a interpretation of Jivanandu's poetry through dance. And we are uh, having we are having two wonderful uh, Kathak exponents. Uh, one is a Colombian Catholic dancer, uh, the disciple of uh, Muharadji, and one is uh, uh, Jessica Coria, and then um, uh, another Catholic uh, dancer who is joining from India, uh, Noenika Ghushchaudhri, and Jivaranda's poetry will be, uh, will be recited by a super vocalist here in the UK uh, and a found friend of Shodho. John, Eric Shilanda, and Manush Chaudhary. And then we'll have uh, another talk session, the interpretation of Yuramundo, that will feature a, a professor of English literature of Lee Street University, uh, Oz Hadwick, and then Professor Sopudi Bhattacharya is joining from India again. Professor uh, Syed Manjur Islam of Dhaka University is joining from Bangladesh. And Professor Shati Guho is joining from India, the director of the uh, Kaduna Youth Center of Kaduna University. And then the evening session uh, will feature uh, a photography, photographic interpretation of the Urundi poetry by Pablo Khaled and Nisha Tabza. 
and some musical interpretation of the Varanda poetry uh, by uh, Omite, and then a uh, spoken word performance by Pobi Shahman. And then the, the today's last session is again reinterpretation of the Varanda by two scholars. Um, uh, one is from America, um, Asfar Hussein, a prominent critic, theorist, and activist, and also an award winning fiction writer, Shahadi Sama. And tomorrow's session will start again from the same time uh, with a dance interpretation, uh, interpretation through dance by uh, a Kathak exponent, Shangita Chetaji, joining from uh, India. Then Shopnadi will give a uh, spoken word performance uh, on Jivarandu's work. And the one that I'm personally looking forward to is a uh, painter, Hiron Mitro. A phenomenal painter, Hiron Mitro, is joining with Professor Jinia Rai. Uh, so uh, Hiron Mitro will render a painting inter interpretation of the Warandu's poetry through painting. Uh, that is uh, one of the most uh, interesting sessions that I'm personally looking forward to. Then again, the interpretation of the Warandu by some panel discussions, starting to a, color, a university academic uh, uh, the professor of Colorado University from the USA, Enric Alvarez, and uh, a poet and uh, playwright, John Fondon, and Professor Shumita Chakravarti is joining from India again. Uh, Asma Choudhury, a writer, uh, is joining from Bangladesh, and a researcher, Gautam Mitra, uh, who is making a film on Jivarando, is joining from India. Then again, uh, Sri Ganguly and Eric Shilanda will, uh, will re read some poems um, of Jivananda with uh, the interpretation through dance by a French Indian dancer, Alisa Alibe, uh, who is joining from France, and then uh, another Kathak uh, dancer from Pune of India, Amira Patanka, is joining uh, tomorrow. Then again, the musical, the, the finale of the festival uh, will feature the musical interpretation by uh, one of the uh, leading Tagu singers here in the UK and the composer Shandre Bey, uh, Manoj Chaudhary, and poet, uh, poet uh, Tanjina Nure Siddiq uh, will read some hunting verses of Divanando, while Labuni Borwe, a popular singer from the UK, will give another musical interpretation of Divanando's work. So many exciting sessions are waiting for you. So please stay tuned in. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Professor Johushin uh, Mojumdar. Uh, Johushin Mojumdar uh, was born in 26 February 1960 uh, at a village Uttar 24 Porgona. After completing his degree from the University of Calcutta, he pursued a career in teaching. He's also, he's also a phenomenal poet and researcher. His first book, Jonoiko Ishor, Ishor Il Bani, the first poetry book, was published in 1978. He's one of the prominent poets of uh, the 80s and is considered as one of the leading architects of Bengali literature and poetry in the post Jivaranda time due to the authenticity of his language, style, and philosophy. Alongside poetry writing, Mr. Mujumdar has composed many collections of essays. The most noteworthy ones are Bangla Kovita, Mejajo Monovic, Shor Shankar, Jivonanando, Aondhukari Chikranatyo, etc. Uh, as an essayist, he is equally acknowledged in both Bengal. So this is truly an honor and uh, Jahorda for having you uh, as part of this inauguration session as a, as a keynote speaker. So over to you now. Manuniyo Upachar Jumhashai, Orishal Vishwavidyalay. Amar Priyo Kobi Bontu, 
মাননীয় মুহসিন উদ্দিন সামিম রেজা টি এম কায়সার এবং সামিম সাহান এবং জীবনানন্দের সঙ্গে অন্তর্গত চেতনায় সংলগ্ন মাননীয় অমিতানন্দ দাস তাদের প্রত্যেককেই আমার সশ্রদ্ধ শ্রদ্ধা নিবেদন করছে একজন কবিকে কিভাবে পড়তে চাই আমি কিংবা একজন কবিকে কিভাবে পড়ব আমরা যে কবি সময়ের স্রোতে সময়ের তরঙ্গে সময়ের নানাবিধ উৎকণ্ঠা পীড়িত বাগবতের মধ্যে আস্তে আস্তে সময় সংলগ্ন একজন পর্যবেক্ষক এবং ভাষ্যকার হয়ে ওঠে কিভাবে পড়ব সেই কবির কবিতা কিভাবে কবির কবিতা ধরে প্রবেশ করব তার কবিতার অভ্যন্তরে কবির আনুষঙ্গিক এবং আনুপূর্বিক জীবন ধরে তাকে ছুঁয়ে দেখব তার রচনা সামগ্রিক নাকি একজন সাধারণ দীক্ষিত এবং অদীক্ষিত সহৃদয় হৃদয় সংবাদী পাঠকের মত আস্তে আস্তে মগ্ন রাতের চৈতন্যে মিশিয়ে নেব একজন কবির স্বর ও সংকট একজন কবির চৈতন্য এবং নিভৃত প্রদেশে আলো অন্ধকারময় আপছায়া পাঠশালা থেকে সুতরাং প্রথমেই একটা বড় এবং ভয়ঙ্কর প্রশ্নের সামনে আমরা দাঁড়িয়ে যাই বিশেষ করে জীবনানন্দের মতো একজন কবির কবিতা পাঠের আগে কিভাবে পড়ব পড়লেও কোথায় গিয়ে শেষ হবে আমাদের সেই অমীমাংসিত যাত্রা পথ কিংবা পড়তে পড়তে কোনো রবীন্দ্রনাথের সোনার তরিখি ডুবে গিয়ে র্যাবর মাতাল তরণী ধরে কোনো নতুন যুগের স্বর শোনা যাবে কোন এক জীবনানন্দের বরিশালের ভূমি ভূমা এবং ভাষার মধ্যে দিয়ে সুতরাং প্রশ্নমুখী এই অনুসন্ধিত দিয়ে আজকে শুরু করতে চাই আমার এই সামান্য কিছু কথা লাভ সামান্য কিছু দিরালা রবীন্দ্রনাথ বাদ দিয়ে বা রবীন্দ্রনাথকে সম্পূর্ণ বর্জন করে একটা সময় যখন তিরিশের কবিরা সঙ্গবদ্ধ হবে বাংলা কবিতায় নাগরিক আধুনিকতার একটা ঘূর্ণাবর্ত তৈরি করতে চাইছিলেন যখন বুদ্ধদেব বসু উনিশশো পঁয়ত্রিশের কবিতা পরিচয় পত্রিকাকে কেন্দ্র করে অচিন্ত কুমার সেনগুপ্ত কিংবা বুদ্ধ বুদ্ধদেব বসুরা একটা প্রত্যয় প্রদীপ্ত কণ্ঠস্বরে রবীন্দ্র ভাবাদর্শ বিরোধিতার একটা সামগ্রিক জগৎ গড়ে তুলতে চাইছিলেন আশ্চর্যজনক ভাবে বিস্ময়কর ভাবে জীবনানন্দ সে সময় কিন্তু স্পষ্টত প্রত্যক্ষ ভাবে রবীন্দ্রনাথ সম্বন্ধে রবীন্দ্রনাথের ভাবাদর্শ বিরোধিতা সম্বন্ধে একটি বাক্য প্রয়োগ করেননি নীরবে নিঃশব্দে নতুন এবং আধুনিক সময়ের সংলগ্ন চেতনাকে ধারণ করতে করতে তিনি শুধু মগ্ন নিস্তব্ধ নিজের মতো করে নিজের কণ্ঠস্বর খুঁজেছেন নিজের মতো করে কবিতার অভিসন্ধানে রত হয়েছেন আমরা জানি একথাও আমরা জানি বাংলা কবিতায় জীবনানন্দের ঠিক আগে রবীন্দ্রনাথ এক আশ্চর্য ধরনের সম্মোহনী অত্রিন্দ্রিয় বিষণ্নতা আমাদের মধ্যে ক্রমশ সঞ্চারিত করে দিয়েছে সেই অতিন্দ্রিয় বিষণ্নতা থেকে রবীন্দ্রনাথ ক্রমশ একটু একটু করে অগ্রসর হতে হতে কোন এক পরম সখা কিংবা কোন এক পরম জীবতার সন্নিকটস্থ পথভূমি খুঁজে পেতে দিয়েছে বলতে দ্বিধা নেই দ্বিধা থাকবার কথাও নেই রবীন্দ্রনাথ গীতি কবিতা লিখতে লিখতে বুঝতে পেরেছিলেন তার এই অতিন্দ্রিয় বিষণ্নতাই গীতি কবিতার মূল উৎস 
এবং তার এই অতীন্দ্রিয় বিষণ্নতা থেকেই কোন এক জীবন দেবতার কাছে তিনি একদিন না একদিন অতীন্দ্রিয় অবিরল আধ্যাত্মিক পিপাসা এবং কৃষ্ণের নিয়ে পৌঁছে যাবেন তখন তিরিশের ঘূর্ণাবর্ত তৈরি হল দু দুটো বিশ্বযুদ্ধের মাঝখানে সামগ্রিক অর্থে সময় সমাজ বাস্তব এবং আমাদের মনোজগতের অভ্যন্তরীণ ক্রিয়া প্রতিক্রিয়া সব দ্রুত আমূল বদলে যেতে শুরু করলো ঠিক সেই সময় রবীন্দ্রনাথের এই অতীন্দ্রিয় বিষণ্নতা থেকে জীবনানন্দ আস্তে আস্তে সরতে সরতে ক্রমশ নিজের কবিতার অভ্যন্তরীণ জগতে করে তুললে একটা অন্তর্বর্তী বিপন্নতা বাংলা কবিতা হয়তো সেই তিনি আধুনিক হল আমি কথাটি পুনরায় উচ্চারণ করতে চাই রবীন্দ্রনাথের অতীন্দ্রিয় বিষণ্নতা যখন ক্রমশ যাবতীয় তামসিকতা ভেদ করে কোন এক অনিষ্ট অনির্দিষ্ট এবং অনির্দেশ্য কোন এক জীবন দেবতার দিকে চলে গেল হারিয়ে গেল সেই হারানো জীবন দেবতার সংলগ্নতা থেকে নিজেকে বিচ্ছিন্ন করে নিয়ে অতীন্দ্রবিষ্ণতাকে পরিত্যাগ করে এক অন্তর্বর্তী বিপন্নতাকে জীবনানন্দ তার কবিতার সংলগ্ন তার কবিতার পঙ্ক্তি স্তব চিত্রকল্প এবং বিন্যাসের অন্তর্ভুক্ত করলেন অন্তর্বর্তী বিপন্নতা যে অন্তর্বর্তী বিপন্নতা থেকে জীবনানন্দ লিখতে পারেন আরো এক বিপন্ন বিষয় আমাদের অন্তর্গত রক্তের ভিতর খেলা করে আমাদের ক্লান্ত করে আমাদের ক্লান্ত ক্লান্ত করে এই অন্তর্বর্তী বিপন্নতায় রবীন্দ্র পরবর্তী সময়কালের স্বতন্ত্র স্বর এবং হাস্য হয়ে উঠে এই যে ক্রমশ নির্মিত বিনির্মিত ভাব বিশ্বের স্বর হয়ে উঠবার এবং নতুন আধুনিক পরিমণ্ডলের কাব্য ভাষার জনক হয়ে উঠবার যে পথ জীবনানন্দ সেদিন খনন করেছিলেন ঠিক তার আগের কয়েকটি মুহূর্ত তার আগের কয়েকটি ছোটখাটো উদ্ভাস প্রকৃত চমক এবং শিহরিত বিশ্বের মতো আমাদের কাছে এসে পৌঁছায় রবীন্দ্রনাথ তার আগে উনিশশো বাইশ সাল উনিশশো তেইশ সালে সাহিত্যের নবত্ব এবং উনিশশো বত্রিশ সালে আধুনিক কাব্য প্রবন্ধ লিখলেন যেখানে রবীন্দ্রনাথ দু দুটো বিশ্বযুদ্ধের মধ্যবর্তী সময়কালের এই তরুণ নব্য কবিদের নাগরিক আধুনিকতাকে প্রায় অভিসম্পাদ দিতে দিতে এও বলে উঠেছিলেন যে এ সবই পাঁকের কবিতা এ সবই পোকার কবিতা এ সবই প্রলাপের কবিতা সত্যি বলতে উনিশশো থেকে উনিশশো যে মধ্যবর্তী সময় লাগলে উনিশশো সালে ইতালিতে মুসলিনি এসে যান এক না এক তন্ত্রের স্বৈরাচারী পতাকা তুলে কিংবা যে পথ ধরে ক্রমশ উনিশশো সালে জার্মানির চ্যান্সেলার হয়ে বসেন হিটলার এবং তার সঙ্গে যোগ দেন জাপানের টোজো কিংবা স্পেনের জেনারেল ফ্রাঙ্কো সেই এক অদ্ভুত ভয়াবহ নৈরাজ্যের সময় কবিতা তো সত্যি বলতে পাকের কবিতাই হয়ে উঠবে কবিতা তো সত্যি বলতে পোকার কবিতাই হয়ে উঠবে কবিতা তো সত্যি বলতে প্রলাপের কবিতাই হয়ে উঠবে দু দুটো বিশ্বযুদ্ধের মাঝখানে দাঁড়িয়ে রবীন্দ্রনাথের জীবন দেবতাকে জীবনানন্দ খুঁজে পাননি কোথাও রবীন্দ্রনাথ যে সহস্তে নির্মিত যে জীবন দেবতার মর্মর মূর্তি তৈরি করে দিয়ে গেছিলেন সেই জীবন দেবতা বাংলা কবিতায় অন্তত জীবনানন্দ কোথাও খুঁজে পাননি তার সঙ্গে সঙ্গে কোন নির্দিষ্ট এবং নির্ধারিত কোন আস্তিক্যের ঠিকানা জীবনানন্দের সেই মুহূর্তে জানা ছিল মূল্যবোধহীন বিশ্বযুদ্ধ নষ্টপ্রষ্ট 
পচা চাল কুমড়ার ছাঁচের মতো বিশ্বজ মানুষের ভেতর থেকে টেনে বার করে নিচ্ছিল তার যাবতীয় শুভবোধ এবং শুভম পরিচয় জীবনানন্দ ঠিক তার মধ্যে বসে এক মহাজাগতিক বৃশ্চিক দংশনের ভেতর জাগতিক জীবনের অঙ্ক কষতে কষতে ক্রমশ বুঝতে পেরেছিলেন ক্রমশ উপলব্ধি করেছিলেন যে আমরা দু দুটো বিশ্বযুদ্ধের মাঝখানে আমাদের জীবন আমাদের যাপন আমাদের যাবতীয় বেঁচে থাকার শ্বাস প্রশ্বাস প্রণীত স্বাদ আহ্লাদ আমোদ এবং সংক্রমণ সবকিছু সবকিছু সামগ্রিক অর্থে আমাদের সমস্ত জীবনই একটা প্রহসনের জীবন হয়ে উঠেছে আমাদের সমস্ত জীবনই একটা প্রহেলিকার জীবন হয়ে উঠেছে আমাদের সমস্ত জীবন একটা প্রকার একটা পাকের একটা প্রলাপের জীবন হয়ে উঠেছে ঠিক এরকম সময় খুব সুস্থ খুব স্বাভাবিক এবং খুব নীলিমা সঞ্চারী ঘন আলোক সঞ্চারী কোন এক জীবন দেবতা এবং তার সঙ্গে সংযুক্ত কোন এক অদৃষ্ট অনির্দিষ্ট আস্তিক্যের আর্সি নব অন্তত তিরিশের কবিরা কেউই খুঁজে পাননি শুধু তিরিশের কবিরা কেন আমরা যখন আজও এই মুহূর্তে নিজেদের কাছে নিজেরাই প্রশ্ন করি আমাদের কি কোনো জীবন দেবতা আছে উত্তর হবে নেই আমাদের কি কোনো আস্তিক্যের আশ্রয় নগর আছে উত্তর হবে নেই আমাদের কি কোনো নির্দিষ্ট সর্বজনীন এবং সর্বত্র গ্রামী কোনো গন্তব্য বা কোনো নিজস্ব বাড়ির ঠিকানা আছে তারও উত্তর হবে নেই ফলত একটা ভয়ঙ্কর নিখিল নাস্তির মৌনে জীবনানন্দ আস্তে আস্তে যেভাবে ডুব জল এসে গ্রাস করে নেয় একটি মানুষকে আর সেই বিপন্ন মানুষটি ডুবতে ডুবতে দুহাত ওপরে তুলে চিৎকার করে ওঠে মর্মন্ত চিৎকার করে ওঠে বাঁচাও বাঁচাও জীবনানন্দের ঘন ঘন গভীর কাব্যাদর্শের নিভৃত তলদেশ থেকে সব সময় সেই ছড়া পালক থেকে শুরু করে সাতটি তারার তিমির পাঠ হয়ে বেলা বেলা কালবেলা পাঠ হয়ে সেই আর্তনা ধ্বনিত হয়ে চলে আত্মিক দংশনের আর্তনাদ আত্মিক যন্ত্রণার আত্মিক অবলোপের আজও জীবনানন্দের কবিতায় কান পাঠ করলেন আজও জীবনানন্দের কবিতা পাঠ করলেন যখন পড়তে পড়তে একটা ভয়ঙ্কর অনিশ্চয় তামসিকতা এবং একটা ভয়ঙ্কর অমীমাংসিত তামাশার মধ্যে আমরা পড়ে যাই যখন দেখতে পাই গোটা জীবনটাই হয়ে উঠেছে ভয়ঙ্কর ভাবে এবং বিপজ্জনক ভাবে একটা হাইড্রেন এবং আমরা সবাই সেই হাইড্রেন খুলে কুষ্ঠ রোগীর মতো চেটে নিচ্ছি জল তখন বৈজ্ঞানিক বস্তুবাদের সার্বত তার থেকে শুরু করে প্রযুক্তির এই নানাবিধ লোভনীয় যৌন প্রস্তাবের ভেতরেও আমরা বুঝতে পারি জীবনানন্দের কবিতা কতখানি প্রাসঙ্গিক হয়ে আছে জীবনানন্দ কতখানি আমাদের রক্ত মাংস মেদ মজ্জা এবং ঘ্রাণের ভিতর নিয়মিত শ্বাস পেয়েছেন নিয়মিত প্রশ্বাস পেয়েছেন এবং ক্রমাগত বলে যাচ্ছেন সেই সব হত্যেল ভুগুদের কথা সেই সব লিঙ্গ শরীরী মানুষদের কথা যারা পৃথিবীটাকে নষ্ট করে দিয়ে গেছে যারা পৃথিবীর সর্বজনীন চেতনা প্রবাহকে ধ্বংস করে দিতে দিয়ে গেছে সেই সব ধ্বংসাত্মক আত্মনাদ প্রতিটি মুহূর্তে জীবনানন্দের কবিতার মধ্যে থেকে উদ্গারিত হয় উৎসারিত হয় একটা আশ্চর্যজনক ভাবে আমরা লক্ষ্য করি জীবনানন্দের কবিতায় কোথাও একটা সব সময় অনিশ্চয় তামসিকতা এবং অনিশ্চয় তামসতার সঙ্গে কিংবা অমীমাংসিত তামাসার সঙ্গে ক্রমাগত দ্বন্দ্ব যুদ্ধে অবতীর্ণ আক্রান্ত একটি মানুষের কণ্ঠস্বরে কবিতা লিখেছে নানা দিক থেকে আক্রান্ত হয়েছে নানা সময়ে আক্রান্ত হয়েছে কখনো অর্থনীতি দিক থেকে আক্রান্ত কখনো বন্ধু বান্ধব আত্মীয় স্বজনের দিক থেকে আক্রান্ত কখনো 
সমপ্রাণতার অভাবে চারপাশ থেকে সরে যাওয়া ঈর্ষাতুর কবিদের দ্বারা আক্রান্ত এবং কখনো কখনো সজনীকান্ত দাসের দের মতো কারো কারো অশ্লীল আক্রমণ জীবনন্দকে বারবার শিকারির মতো চারদিক থেকে ঘিরে ফেলে সত্যি বলতে এরকম একটা দৃশ্যকল্প কি আমরা জীবনানন্দের কবিতার অভ্যন্তরে ঢুকলে দেখতে পাই না যে আপাত মস্তক একজন মানুষ প্রাণপণে তার নিভৃত অন্তর্গত সত্তাগত একটা আশাবাদকে ক্রমশ প্রজ্ঞাদীপিত অনুশীলনের মধ্যে দিয়ে বাঁচিয়ে চলতে চাইছে আর তার চারপাশে কিছু হত্যেল ভ্রঘু তার চারপাশে কিছু লিঙ্গ শরীরী মানুষ তার কাছে কিছু এক না একতন্ত্রী ক্ষমতা কর্তৃত্ব এবং আধিপত্যবাদের প্রভু তারা সেই আশাবাদী মানুষটাকে চারপাশ থেকে ঘিরে ফেলেছে চক্রবুহের মতো শিকারির ভয়ঙ্কর আগ্রাসনের মধ্যে পড়ে আছে মোহন মোহ মার খাচ্ছে একটু নিরুপায় অস্ত্রহীন নিরবতার মানুষ যার অস্ত্র বলতে কবিতার শব্দ যার অস্ত্র বলতে কবিতার চিত্রকল্প যার অস্ত্র বলতে কোন এক গাঢ় এবং গভীরতর সচেতনার মতো কোন এক প্রেম কিংবা কিংবা শুভঙ্করী চৈতন্য সারা জীবন জীবনানন্দ সেই শুভঙ্করী চৈতন্যের দিকে এগিয়ে গেছে সংকটটা আরেকটা কথা বলি সংকটটা এই সংকট থেকেই আমরা জীবনানন্দের সামগ্রিক কবিতা পর্যালোচনা করতে করলে বুঝতে পারবো সমস্ত জীবন ধরে জীবনানন্দ আক্রান্ত আমির অসুখের কথা বলেছেন যে আক্রান্ত আমির অসুখই ক্রমশ হয়ে উঠেছে পৃথিবীর গভীর গভীরতর অসুখ নমস্কার Our audiences are uh, uh, enjoying as much as uh, I am personally doing. And uh, there are so many comments from so many uh, audiences from all across the globe. Uh, I feel tempted to read, actually, but we don't have enough time. Uh, I will try to read uh, in the meantime uh, when the next session starts. Uh, but uh, before we move on to the last speaker, the president of today's uh, discussion, uh, uh, Professor Dr. Sadiq Larkin, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Boisha University. I'm just asking uh, whether anyone has had any quick input. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, if you are still there, would you like to add anything uh, in this discussion before I move on to the last speaker? Uh, no, thank you so much. I'm still here. I'm, I'm listening um, <laughs> to all the, <laughs> all the distinguished speakers. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to, uh, to learn about uh, one of my favorite poets also. <laughs> so please go on, please move on. Thank you. Many, many thanks, many thanks. Uh, uh, so our last speaker is the president of today's discussion, Professor Dr. Mohamed Sadiq Larifi, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Borussia University. Thank you, Tim Kaiser. It's my great opportunity for me. Okay. The Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Deepumoni MP, the Minister of Education of the Government of Bangladesh, the keynote speaker, okay. Professor Jaur Sen Majumdar, Amitananda Dash, nephew of Jawaharlal Dash, Professor Shami Mireja, of Jahangir University, Professor Dr. Moshinuddin, Director of Jivananda Research Center, Borishal University, and all my online audience. I would like to be with the expression of gratitude to the organizers of Jivananda Festival for venturing into a new dimension where Jivananda Das will be looked at and appreciated from completely new perspectives. Interpreting Jivananda through an alternative lens, music, photography, 
and dancing might sound radical but this new ways of exploring jivanand show the depth of his work and his impact in reshaping and redefining modern bangla literature i have profoundly enjoyed hearing from the scholars and the researchers of this webinar who have put in our efforts to give jivanand's poetry a new height the idea behind this festival is ingenious and refreshing i must say this is a challenge in itself to render jivanand's poetry with visual interpretation so dance etc but we must continue to reinvent our poets in this way with a view of helping people appreciate their creation in in, in to right ways i congratulate shuddha society for successfully materializing an original and unique the discovery of jivanand das for people though this creative work people from all over the world will not only know our evergreen beautiful bengal with its many colorful seasons flowering fast rivers natural fauna and flora but will also enjoy music and dance that are important parts of our culture we all know that we lost this great man from our land for the crusted partition of 1947 due to this crusted partition wikipedia unfortunately writes in its first sentence on jivanand that he was an indian poet whereas we all know that he was a poet of borishal in bangladesh he was a son of the soil of borishal he was born in borishal he received his education in borishal he worked in borishal and he lived 48 years of his 50 years life in borishal as a permanent resident he lived only 6 years in india but now wikipedia writes that jivanand was an indian poet this is a very sad for us the nature presented in most of his poems testifies to the fact that jivanand was not an indian poet rather a poet of bengal and more truly a poet of borishal the bitterness bengal that his poems present does not cover the landscape of the whole bengal rather it covered the landscape of the southern bengal however people longevity call him the poet of beautiful bengal and it is our pride we are happy that across the world a keen interest is growing in the poetry of jivanand his poems are being translated in many languages of the world though i have emphasized his belonging in borishal he is no longer a poet of borishal nor even a poet of borishal or india 
rather he is now a global poet a poet of the world the interest is growing both in the general readership and the academic readership he is now being taught as a part of the syllabus in a number of universities in the world the festival arranged by shuddho in collaboration with several universities is a new dimension of that growing interest the scope to look at this poetry from multiple angles for example music dance and photography proves that his poems have a lot to offer to the world of literary scholarship i thank shuddho society of poetry and indian music for this unique endeavor i feel sincerely honored to be the chair of this session i would also like to especially thank dr deepu moni mp our honorable chief guest the minister of education of the government of bangladesh we all know that she is busier than anybody of us here but anyhow she positively responded to our request and gave her kind consent to be with us as the chief guest of the session she has always been a patron of art and literature and having her a program like this is an honor my sincere gratitude is to professor jahur sen mojumdar for his excellent keynote speech my sincere thanks are also for amitanand dash nephew of jivanand dash professor shamim reja of jangnog university professor mohsin of burshal university and all my online audience lastly i hope that initiatives like this to know and we invent our bengals brilliant poets and artists will be carried on by organization like shuddho thanks all thank you many 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 thanks many thanks uh, sadik rafin sir for uh, your uh, insightful talk Uh, insightful speech, uh, and then the issue that you raised as well. Uh, perhaps uh, we would like to see uh, Jivanand Dash as the poet of Borisha, uh, uh, and uh, this is nice to see that the people of Borisha is uh, also uh, feeling so proud of having uh, the, the poet uh, Jivanand Dash uh, as their. own poet actually because they like quite right you said jivananda's uh, childhood uh, um, spent in borishal uh, and even in the mature age he was quite connected to uh, borishal so many 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 thanks to all of our uh, speakers uh, uh, that includes the honorable education minister of bangladesh government uh, kindly uh, um, Uh, immense gratitude for joining at this festival now because uh, if you would like to introduce uh, such a major poet of bengal in the world uh, literary scene we need the support from almost all corners and many thanks to all of our supporters who thought and who believed in shodho and believed in the fact that this poet needs to be discussed needs to be preached uh, at the world literary scene and this is so nice to see this festival uh, has been promoted by many mainstream uh, literary group organizations 
and universities research venues here in the UK. And many thanks to them as well. So uh, uh, many thanks to Josh and Mojumda Johudza. Uh, it is always a pleasure uh, for myself uh, to be able to listen to your uh, profound speech. And today wasn't any exception than what we had before, the, the experience we had before. Uh, thank you very much for this insightful talk. Uh, many thanks, Shamim Raja. Like I mentioned uh, before, if you have a if you have Shamim Raja as a friend, you don't have uh, you don't need to have anything else actually. So many many thanks, uh, Shamim Raja, uh, for joining. Uh, many thanks, Shamim Shahan. Um, thanks to Omita Nandada uh, for joining. We will move on to the next uh, session. Uh, next one. Uh, thank you, Sadiq Arifin, sir, uh, for all the support you did uh, from behind the scene. And many thanks to the other staff members of Boishal University. And look forward for more collaboration like this. Uh, thanks again to, uh, to the Minister of Education of Bangladesh. Uh, we are moving on to the next one. So please stay uh, tuned. Uh, next session is is the interpretation of poetry through dance. Uh, Jessica Correa, Colombian dancer, already has joined. Uh, Nanika Ghosh uh, from India already has joined. Um, uh, so we are looking forward uh, for the next session. And then after this session, we, uh, Professor Dr. Tohudi Bhattacharjo is joining from India. Oz Hardwick, Professor Oz Hardwick from Lee's University, Lee Street University. Professor Syed Manjul Islam, is joining from Dhaka, Professor Dr. Shanti Ghosh from India, and look forward for, and, and then again, uh, we have another uh, reintegration of you around the session. Professor Asfar Hussain is joining from um, uh, USA, and uh, Professor Shahad Jaman of Sussex University is joining from the UK. So please stay tuned, and many thanks to all of our speakers again. Uh, let me introduce our next, uh, uh, next uh, performers. Uh, I'm sure uh, if Jessica, thank you, Jessica, for joining. And thank you, Nayanika Ghosh Choudhury, uh, for joining. And thank you, uh, uh, Manoj Choudhury, uh, for joining uh, for the next session. Uh, we are trying to... Uh, uh, Let me see. Right. Uh, I can see where the waiting room. Thank you. And now Eric Shilanda is joined. So thank you. So let us uh, the, let us introduce our next performers. Uh, Manoj Choudhury is a spoken word artist based in the UK. Uh, he has worked uh, with Choudhury. Uh, especially in Chodos, he performed in Chodos Music, Chodos uh, Bangla Music Festival before. Uh, he has works. He, he has also worked extensively uh, uh, for many organizations, many cultural organizations. Uh, and then we have Nayonika Ghosh Choudhury. <clears throat> Just a second. Nayonika is. So Nanika uh, Goshodi has joined from India, an accomplished Kathak dancer, choreographer, and teacher. Uh, Nanika Goshodi actually doesn't need introduction. Uh, perhaps many of you know. Uh, she started her uh, Suzanne to the world of classical dance when she was when she was four years old. Daughter of a railway officer, she was born and brought brought up in Kolkata. She did her Master of Arts, MA in Dance, uh, from Rabindra Bharati University, Kolkata in 2005, with distinction and first class. A Master of Arts in Bengali Literature from Calcutta University, Kolkata. She started performing, she started performing from her tender age in different stages. From the last 25 years, she has been performing in different parts of the globe and all over India. She received a training under the tutelage of several renowned gurus of India, like Paddo Bibushan, 
পণ্ডিত বিজু মহারাজজি পণ্ডিত বিজয় শঙ্করজি শ্রীমতী শ্রীমতী রানী শ্রীমতী রানী কর্মজি শ্রীমতী চেতনা জলানজি অ্যান্ড মেনি আদার্স শি ইজ অলসো ট্রেইন আন্ডার পণ্ডিত রাজেন্দ্র রাজেন্দ্রজি পণ্ডিত চিত্রেশ দাসজি সরি আই পাহাস নি so many thanks nanika for joining uh, as part of this festival uh, thank you so so much kaisabhai and, and, and so much for your uh, visual interpretation of uh, you were on this poetry and we also have jessica korea the disciple of the world renowned maestro pandit bichu maharaj ji the pioneer of indian classical dance kathak in colombia the first foreign representative and teacher uh, for iccr at the indian embassy uh, in bogota colombia after completing her studies with honors of kalashram and sri sri ramji kalakendra 2012 she has she has dedicated to teach uh, and perform all around the globe so many thanks jessica for joining Uh, and we also have Eric Shilanda a long standing friend of Shodho Shodho started uh, uh, i mean about 10 years ago Shodho started uh, with a vision uh, of promoting the beauty of world uh, music and indian classical music uh, connecting with other art form poetry uh, uh, and then Sh- Eric Shilanda uh, is Uh, performing uh, from the day one as as you know so the uh, was founded by uh, founded uh, by another uh, indian classical vocalist chandra chakravarti ji and uh, and many amol uh, poddar uh, shuji choudhury many others who supported at that time uh, and then uh, eric shilanda uh, was uh, one of us Uh, from the the world so eric many thanks for joining again uh, and a warm welcome thank let you let us start i'm let sorry start. i had technical difficulties uh, yeah i i can see let us start with your uh, poem or poetry reading perhaps uh, a phenomenal poetry of jivanando is being read by eric and then we'll move on to manush choudhury for uh, reading some um uh, poetry that will be reflected through the visual interpretation uh, in dance these are three short poems yeah is the sound all right for you yeah for thousands of years i roamed the paths of this earth from waters around sri lanka in dead of night to seas up the malabar coast much have i wandered i was there in the gray world of ashoka and of bimbisara pressed on through darkness to the city of vidarbha i am a weary heart surrounded by life's frothy ocean to me she gave a moment's peace her hair was like an ancient darkling night in vidasha her face the craftsmanship of shravasti as the helmsman when his rudder broken far out upon the sea adrift sees the grass green land of a cinnamon isle just so through the darkness i saw her said she where have you been so long and raised her birds nest like eyes At day's end, 
like hush of dew comes evening. A hawk wipes the scent of sunlight from its wings. When earth's colors fade and some pale design is sketched, then glimmering fireflies paint in the story. All birds come home, all rivers, all of life's tasks finished. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, um, Eric, for leading two wonderful poems of Jivananda. Let's start with uh, the visual interpretation of Jivananda's poetry uh, through dance. So let's try, start with Nanika Yosh Choudhury's interpretation of Jivananda's poetry uh, being recited by Manoj Choudhury. But in that case, I need to hide uh, perhaps Let's see whether I can hide others. Hey, my post. This is perhaps a problem. Uh, let me see. Show put in waiting room. I'm putting others in waiting room. In the meantime, I'm putting Jessica in waiting room. So please don't go. Please stay there. Uh, so that right now, if you kindly, I'm just putting myself as hiding. Okay, good. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Kaiser Bai and uh, Noi Nukadi. Uh, it is a great honor to uh, participate uh, in this uh, platform. And I also grateful Noi Nukadi um, to take this, give me this opportunity to recite uh, along with her dancers. So, um, uh, we, we will try our best uh, to, to synchronize the recitation and the dancing as much as we can, obviously. Please forgive us uh, due to some uh, technical difficulties if it has happened. Asabai, if you can confirm me, is the sound is okay? Great. Thank you. Just a minute, Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, that's fine. Go here, how are you? অসংখ্য নক্ষত্রের রাত সারা রাত বিস্তীর্ণ হাওয়া আমার মশারিতে খেলেছে মশারিটা ফুলে উঠেছে মৌসুমী সমুদ্রের পেটের মতো কখনো বিছানা ছিঁড়ে নক্ষত্রের দিকে উড়ে যেতে চেয়েছে এক একবার মনে হচ্ছিল আমার আধো ঘুমের ভিতর হয়তো মাথার উপরে মশারিটা নেই আমার সাতি তার আরে কোলে ঘেঁষে নীল হাওয়ার সমুদ্রে সাদা বকের মতো উড়ছে সে কাল এমন চমৎকার এক রাত ছিল সমস্ত মৃত নক্ষত্রীরা কালে জেগে উঠেছিল আকাশে এক তিল ফাঁক ছিল না পৃথিবীর সমস্ত ধূসর প্রীত মৃতদের মুখ সে নক্ষত্রের ভেতরে দেখেছি আমি অন্ধকারে রাতে অশ্বত্থের চূড়ায় প্রেমিক চিল পুরুষের শিশির ভেজা চোখের মতো ঝলমল করছিল সমস্ত নক্ষত্রেরা জোছনা রাতে ব্যাবিলনের রানীর ঘাড়ের ওপর চিতার উজ্জ্বল চামড়ার সালের মতো জল জল করছিল বিশাল আকাশ কাল এমন আশ্চর্য এক রাত ছিল যে নক্ষত্রেরা আকাশের বুকে হাজার হাজার বছর আগে মরে গিয়েছে তারাও কাল জানালার ভেতর দিয়ে অসংখ্য মৃত আকাশ 
সঙ্গে করে এনেছে যে রূপসীদের আমি এশিরিয়ায় মিশরে বিদিশায় মরে যেতে দেখেছি কালে তারা অতি দূরে আকাশের সীমানায় কুয়াশায় কুয়াশায় দীর্ঘ বর্ষা হাতে কাতারে কাতারে দাঁড়িয়ে গেছে যেন মৃত্যুকে দলিত করবার জন্য জীবনের গভীর জয় প্রকাশ করবার জন্য প্রেমের ভয়াবহ গম্ভীর স্তম্ভ তুলে আনার জন্য আরষ্ঠ অভিভূত হয়ে গেছি আমি কালে রাতের প্রবল নীল অত্যাচার আমাকে ছিঁড়ে ফেলেছে যেন আকাশের বিরামহীন বিস্তীর্ণ ডানারে ভেতর পৃথিবী কিটের মতো মুছে গিয়েছে কাল উতঙ্গ বাতাস এসেছে আকাশের বুক থেকে নেমে আমার জানালার ভেতর দিয়ে সাই সাই করে সিংহের হুঙ্কারে উৎক্ষিপ্ত হরিত প্রান্তরের অজস্র জেবরার মতো হৃদয় ভেঙে গিয়েছে আমার বিস্তীর্ণ সবুজ ঘাসের গন্ধে দিগন্ত প্লাবিত বলিয়ান রৌদ্রের আঘ্রাণে মিলনন্মুক্ত বাঘিনীর গর্জনের মতো অন্ধকারের চঞ্চল বিরাট সজীব রোমস উচ্ছ্বাসে জীবনের দুর্দান্ত নীলমত্ততায় আমার হৃদয় পৃথিবী ছিঁড়ে উড়ে গেল নীল হাওয়ার সমুদ্রে স্ফীত মাতাল বেলুনের মতো গেল উড়ে একটা দূর নক্ষত্রের মাস্তুলকে তারায় তারায় উড়িয়ে নিয়ে চলল একটা দুরন্ত শকুনের মতো গভীর হাওয়ার রাত ছিল কাল ধন্যবাদ student of bengali literature as well as a dancer you know so it has always been and um, i wonder how intelligently and profoundly he does, just uh, makes the image imagery and all these things so i felt very nice i it thank you and i can feel the opportunity uh, on this uh, occasion of basant the spring you have just uh, created a beautiful platform to the most celebrated poet of bengal as well as of bengali literature jibon and anand means life and the joy together so thank you so very much and thank, thank you so you. much manish thank you nanika di thank you it's a great honor to uh, perform with you and uh, hopefully this is not thank the you. end we will do in future as well thank you and, uh, exactly. thank you very much thank you thank, thank you. you so so much thank you thank you, thank you. oh jessica korea uh with another beautiful poem by hi jessica thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to recite along with your dancing as well um thanks a lot okay okay i'm very glad to be here and i want to thank uh uh mr kasher ji for the invitation and to all of you uh for being here is a very special occasion and very special for me to, to get to know more about jivanandas das ji and uh, i'm very glad to interpret one of his um
Hi, Jessica, are you there? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Can Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. So I I don't know in which part uh, my my voice was uh, broken. Yeah, we can hear you now, and we can see you. Uh, so this one uh, obviously is naked, late, lonely hand. So uh, and uh, it's another the great poet of Jibanananda Das. So, Jessica, are you ready now? Should I start? Yes, I'm ready. I just wanted to ask you if uh, we are going to use uh, your voice uh, because sometimes I, I cannot get you properly. Yeah. So uh, you, you or, can use my uh, recorded I... one and, and yeah, you can you, you can use my recorded one the when recorded you're dancing. One. Yeah, and, I, and I, okay. I'm going to recite okay. as well. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So just let me know when you're ready. Okay. One thing has the has the link been? Did you manage to find the okay. link? Uh, live Just streaming, try. okay, so that you can perhaps you manage to share share in your Facebook or something like. That. Yeah, I have shared Kaiserberg in my on my on my profile. Okay, yeah. Jessica, did you did you find the link? Okay, live streaming link. Okay. Hello, Jessica. Hello. Did you did you find the live streaming okay? Live streaming link in Facebook. Yeah. Yes. Just uh, sometimes uh, your voice is coming. I think a bit uh, late. Did you manage to Did you manage to share this? Did you manage to share this link? Yes. Already. Yes. Yeah, you did it already. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> okay. So okay, you're you ready, Jessica? Are you? Darkness once again begins to rise. This darkness that glides mysteriously. Mysterious. He who has loved me once, whose face I have yet to see, like that woman, is this darkness deepening, closing? In open a paper slide. A certain French city comes to moonlight. In my heart, wake outlines of some gray palace black city. On shores of the Indian Ocean, or the Mediterranean, or the banks of the Sea of Tyre. Not today, but once there was a city and a palace. A palace lavishly furnished. Persian carpets, Kashmiri shawls, flawless pearls, and round by the I lost her dead eyes with the dream. Eyes and you, women. All these temples feel well. There was only sunlight, but rose and pigments, dense, heavy manure foliage. There was orange sunlight, much orange sunlight. And you were there. For many hundreds of centuries, I have not seen you. Your face have not searched. February darkness brings with it these table decisions. Sorrowful lines of nudity domes and arches. Fragrance of invisible gaze, 
countless deer, lion, crunchings, waiting, staying in the strength of hopes, waiting in dreams. A pretty glow from room to afternoon, further in a room. Mom, three, four, mom, down. Sweat of the sun smeared on her face, her face, watermelon, green and red glasses. And Thank you. Many, many, many thanks. Perhaps the sound was a bit uh, causing problem, I think. But uh, yeah. with the music, uh, perhaps if I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether I, this is me who uh, heard a bit vaguely. Uh, but with the music, it went so well. It went so well, so, you know. Uh, many, many thanks to uh, Naomi Kerr. Uh, many thanks to Jessica, many thanks to uh, Manu Choudhury for being the part of this uh, great celebration and for offering this visual interpretation of Jivaranda's work and look forward uh, to uh, working, to work uh, in many collaborations like this. Thank you again, and many thanks to all Thank the you audiences. Guys, uh, we are moving Thank to the you. next session, which is reinterpretation. Thank of you so much. Exactly, you are welcome. You all are welcome. We are moving on to the next session. Uh, 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 our next speakers, our speakers of the next session, which is reinterpretation of Jivaranda Dash again, already already joined here, uh, uh, and this is a humble request to you, audiences. If you find it interesting. Uh, please preach uh, these words to your friends. Please share it uh, in your timeline and let your friends be the part of this wonderful uh, session, a wonderful festival of art, literature, uh, and music. Um, and this is also the audiences who are from non Bengali uh, background. I'm sure uh, this hunting verses of poetry are. Uh, letting you uh, a bit of space uh, for rethink or reflect uh, on, on, on this time, on this difficult time. So uh, again, Jessica, many thanks. Nanika, many thanks. Manush Shodhi, many thanks. Uh, we are moving on to Thank the you. next session. Thank you. The reinterpretation of Jivaranda Dash uh, through some insightful talk and we are uh, so happy to see our uh, where right our next speakers the speakers of the next sessions already have joined uh, thank you tobudir da professor uh, Tob dr tobudir bhattacharya uh, for joining as part of this session uh, um, and many thanks to uh, Dr. Shati Ghosh, many thanks to Sayyid Manjur Islam Manjubai for joining uh, at this festival. Uh, your presence definitely uh, have glorified uh, this festival in many ways. <coughs> and it's also uh, an opportunity for uh, non Bengali audiences who are watching to know and to explore Jivaranda Dash from <coughs> experts. Uh, like yourselves, uh, and this is an honor to have you as part of Shoda's uh, uh, activity, Shoda's art initiative. Those who are not familiar with Shoda, as you know, this is uh, predominantly an Indian classical music promoting organization, but also it deals with uh, profound world poetry, profound music of Western uh, classical background and other global music. And for the last 10 years, uh, it is in journey to campaign new audience of profound music and art and literature through, uh, uh, through some 
uh, beautiful, groundbreaking events in uh, South Bank Center, Royal Festival Hall, uh, Edinburgh Fringe Festival, Carriageworth Theatre Hall, Seven Arts Center, the House of Commons, British Parliament, uh, uh, Richmond Theatre and Inner Centre, many other art venues here in London. So this is an honor to have uh, some leading uh, thinkers, leading public, leading public intellectuals, and lead, leading uh, academicians as part of this festival. Uh, let us start with uh, uh, Dr. Shanti Ghosh. Uh, uh, we personally would like to have some sort of interpretation, your own interpretation on Jivarananda's work. And I know that you you also have uh, done uh, many works on Jivarananda's uh, prose, uh, which was uh, quite hidden for many years. And then our scholars uh, started a journey to re-explore the beauty of his prose work. So Dr. Shati Ghosh, the director of Najul Center for Social and Cultural Studies, Kaji Najul University in India, born in Calcutta, spent her childhood in different villages and cities across the state of the West Bengal. After graduation from Presidency College, Calcutta in, Bengal, in Bengali literature, she completed her master's and PhD from Jadupu University. Resided many years in other, uh, at other cities in India, worked as the social communication expert to deal with the human development issues in Rukkola Kendra, government of I and CA, West Bengal, uh, for many, uh, for more than 10 years. Since 2012, working in the state universities uh, as academic administrator. As a passionate writer, she has uh, 14 published books and some, some are yet to be published, uh, including research theses. So many thanks, Shatidi, for uh, uh, for your time and effort, and joining for joining uh, as part of today's session. Very good evening to you all. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the director Soudha Society for Poetry and Indian Music, Mr. T. M. Kaisar Ahmed to invite me to share the platform with the extremely distinguished panel. I want to express my deep, enrooted love and passion for the person named Jivanananda Dash. Jivanananda Dash, the poet, by using the word in its sense of a creator, I thereby permit myself not to indulge in elaborating the other mirrored aspects of his persona. Poet, the word signifies a state of being omniscient, insightful, and all perceiving. The preamble, however, shall remain restra restrained in order to delve straight into the core of the matter. The range of contradicting adjectives used for Jivanananda until today go on to prove that he has been read incessantly and even analyzed. Important critics like Shoraj Bandhapadhyay, Shuhash Mukhopadhyay, Torun Shannal and others has had accepted the ensuing misunderstanding amongst themselves. Later on, the rendered itself useless to limit him with titles such as Prokitir Kobi, the poet of nature, Shamaj Shachetan Kobi, the socially aware poet, Itihash Shachetan Kobi, the historically aware poet, Chitra Rupamayotar Kobi, the poet of imageries, Upama Jivananandu show, uh, Jivananandu-esque analogy, Gram Banglar Kobi, the poet of rural Bengal. Contemporary sociological Economic and historical and political issues were of his interest, an extensive account of how his observation remained relevant in today's world after centuries since the poet has lived, 
is beyond the scope of today's platform. For the time being, we could only evoke a few pertinent instances. In the early 90s, while working on the metaphors that Jivanarandu has used in his novels, I often shuddered in awe the depiction of dilapidated rural economy stuck by the Permanent Settlement Act of Bengal, the urbanic, urban centric tendencies of the north land roads and middle class or the void of Calcutta centric life all came to his all came to life in his poems. Mrita Poshudeir Moto Amader Mangshule Amrao Puritaki akin to dead animals we lay with our fleshes in the camps. His repeated portrait of humans as analogous to non-humans in his helpless attempt to find similarities, some ignorant beings. The main characters of his novel titled Shutirtho are Shutirtho, Virupakho, Monika, Jayati, and Khemesh. It is noteworthy that comparison to a leopard and a cow have been drawn with respect to Shutirtho only twice among the entire course of the novel. On the other hand, Virupakho, the shrewd entrepreneur who perceives every personal relationship in terms of commodities, therefore he has become analogous to a hyena, a pig, a bear, a cat, a swivet cat, and so on. Jayati, belonging to a well-educated, renowned family, describes her husband, Birupakko, as a mutt baron. She had married him only for his wealth. Materialism also became one of the main reasons of Birupakko's defeat. He did not even succeed in winning over the arrogance of Monika, the landlady from Baliganj. The woman whom he perceives to be like an ethereally luminescent clownfish, but he entitled himself as a chunky fish. Kotka machir moto. Shutirtho belongs to a middle classes. He lives in a rented flat in Calcutta, engaging in self criticism, enthusiasm him. He desires to escape from living a reality of const constantly talking to himself in the manner of a whirlpool, he eventually gets involved with the worker strike. No grand revolution could be achieved by any Gandhi. Shutitthar's notion appears to be resonating with our present. The people like Yasin believes that Shutitthar still is a symbol of a privileged Brahmin at a larger scale of events. Shutitthar, however, acknowledges that to become a hero like those among the French and Russian revolutionaries by redeeming humanity and bringing on emancipation for all is beyond himself. It invokes amazement, generates blood rush through our own self to encounter a similar deceiving desperation in the name of emancipation for all in today's world. In this context, there hardly remains any distinction between the black lives of America and the cold trodden Indians at the Shinghu border, or even the blinded state and pain of the political prisoners denied justice resonates in Jayati's words, our death, death that of our times, amader mrittu, amader ejuger. Apart from making mainstream space for the people like Hamid and Anantaram, no other dream remains worth to be lived because in order for humanity to progress or regress, one either needs a beastie, someone or magic realism, a Lenin, Gandhi or Kolki. The staleness of today's world became most prominent such realization is not only Shutitthos, it is ours. We are engulfed by the strong sense of disgust, all those who shadow our daily lives with an animalistic essence, resembling Birupakho. The aroma of blood has turned his mind 
into that of a tiger. We encounter such people all across the cities, suburbs, villages, localities. Here lies the significance of having women like Monica, one who resembles most the nature, one who is filled with the sheer brilliance of liveliness, who wanders like the moon that has moved beyond a chance of eclipses and normatively. Although this reflects Shutitha's fantasy, he desires to find himself in that phase, to leave Calcutta and return to Joshur, Khulna, Dhaka, appears synonymous to his fondness to rural Bengal. He never ceases to dream, therefore poems always resonates. Perhaps the final consequences of human society is not exhaustion. Perhaps there is no death, there is love, there is peace, and there is progress. Mohatma Gandhi, Bella, Abella, Kalbella. Hoytoba, Manobir, Shamaj, Shamajir, Shesh, Purinoti, Glani, Noy. Hoyto, Mrittu, Mrittu, Noy. Prem, Ache, Mrittu, Noy. Prem, Ache, Shanti, Ache, Manushir, Ogdrushar, Ache. Yet, present dire circumstances of the world. It is impossible to build a honeycomb and practice peace effectively because history at the brink of his, this age is intoxicated and embedded in half-truths. Tripled, blinded crowds, thorns and surroundings, an unnatural departure, the end of a famine sees the birth of another anew, the end of a warfare commences drum rolls to the next. There seems to be no end of people's greed. Aishab Din Ratri, Shrishtha Kavita. Itihash ardho shotte kamat channe akhano kaler kinaray. Chadirike bikolango andho bhir. Alik prayan mannantar sheshole punaray nabu mannantar. Juddho sheshoye gede notun juddher nandirol manusher lalushar sheshne. Even today, we cohabit with such people. Alternatively, we are such people ourselves, those who are no end of greed, those who are destroying the colors, essence, and beauty of the world. Still, we have no other option than to face this very same world, to avoid hundred screaming swine and overwhelming pains of souls, but reasons and aspire to become being to another planet is not what we dream for ourselves. Thus, Black Lives Matter is not only a movement in Florida to protest the death of George Floyd. It is a metaphor to voice of all those who are oppressed and tortured. Deciphering Jibonanando does not only connect us to the history that is born for, of the womb of the past, it is instilled in the flesh of present. It is gravity with the beckoning of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you all to hear me. And thank you. I just want to mention I am Dr. Swati Guha. Guho, Guho, Shati Guho. Sorry. I mean, it's a column, Shati Guho, Dr. Shati Guho, perhaps I. I uh, I pronounce your name wrong. Apology for this. Uh, uh, many, many thanks to our audience. There are so many comments. Uh, I wish if I could read them, but let me see. Perhaps I'll find some time uh, so that I can read at least some of those. Uh, our next speaker, uh, I know that this is quite late night in Bangladesh and India. Uh, many thanks. Uh, Professor Taputi Bhattacharya uh, for joining, agreeing to join in this at uh, this late night actually. Uh, uh, but good thing that the followers uh, from all across the globe are so much enjoying uh, these profound speeches, and in some extent those speeches, those those talks are quite new uh, for some audiences, uh, and that will definitely help. Uh, meaningfully.
to preach the beauty of, uh, of the works of uh, Yuvarandra Dash uh, globally. So our next speaker is uh, Professor Topudit uh, Bhattacharya. Let me see whether I can... <clears throat> so Professor Topudit Bhattacharya is quite familiar in this platform. Um, he has been invited to uh, do perhaps to lead some, to do some talks uh, in Grunty's uh, live streaming, uh, especially the hundred poets around the world for uh, for love, which is so hugely accepted by global community. And many thanks for your contribution and help and support. So what is that? So what you a, a poet, essayist, literary theorist, and critic. Uh, was born in born on 12 February 1949 and also a public intellectual. Uh, he's the former vice chancellor of Washington University and the forerunner of uh, contemporary Bengali literature. His constant research on the recent literary theory and application of the West is well known amongst the readers. So there are some thinkers, Western thinkers. Uh, uh, was first actually introduced by uh, Professor Tabudi Bhattacharya, that include Bakhtin and many other Western post-structural thinkers. <coughs> uh, he has 141 books uh, to his credit so far in both Bengali and English. Essayist uh, Tabudi made his debut as a poet in the 70s and his first poetry book is called Tudi Shei. Priyo Kushom. Pirito Kushom. It, oh, Binito Kushom. Uh, Pirito Kushom. Uh, the total number of his poetry collection to date is 35. Uh, he retired as an emeritus professor of the Department of Bengali uh, Literature, Ashram Central University. He also played a vital role as a professor of modern Indian language and literature at the University of Delhi. So some of his noteworthy publications are Pratiche Shahitya Tattu, Nari Chetana, Mononeo Shahitya, Khaner Bahushor, Jivarando, Poravastok, so many, many, many books uh, uh, to his credit. So Tavodida, over to you. Uh, so if you kindly offer your own interpretation on Jivarando briefly. Thank you, Kaiser, once again. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> today I'm suffering from some sore throat, so excuse me if I sound very harsh today. Because before joining here with you all, I was uh, attending uh, another one in Kolkata. It was on something with our own sweet mother tongue, Bengali. Because 21st February is uh, very near. Anyway, uh, so that's why that explains to a certain extent the soreness of my throat. Anyway, but it is very difficult to say no to you, Kaisar, as always. Well, I must tell you, I was thinking of uh, talking something about the uh, social hermeneutical interpretation of Jivanananda. And to my real surprise, I found that Swati, I am uh, acquainted with her good works. Anyway, uh, thank Swati... You, sir, thank you, Thank you. Thanks, Swati. So, uh, she spoke just in that vein, and I enjoyed it very much. And what is most important is uh, to place somebody in the correct perspective, which she did very well, exceedingly well. Because she talked about Shingu Bhaja, she talked about some other things. These are all, and she works on metaphor, I know, because I have read that book of hers. But well, metaphor is always being created and recreated. Jivarananda was a poet, uh, the highest caliber. And many of us who speak Bengali, 
we are not quite aware even now even now about his good works uh, prose works shati has made some extensive contribution uh, uh, i'm aware of it. and uh, she spoke really nicely today so uh, when you think of jibonanand the greatest possible poet in our language and uh, you find that he constantly mingles and remingles dream and reality and fuses in such a way that his thought processes his feelings they simply attain the status of surreality but i am not going much details into that because today i don't want to speak on that when she was referring to shati was referring to some very well known poems by jibonan no? i was also very interestingly i was also trying to concentrate on some of his good pieces in in the collection called shrestha kavita and there as you all are aware those who have already read jibonan uh, that he has written a poem rather long poem entitled 1946-47 means 1946-47 you know in our history in 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 indian history this uh, period is very important but i am not referring to that because of these only when jibonanand writes i will have to use the untranslatable original in bengali and in my very humble way i will not try to really translate them because this is impossible for me because his poetry cannot be translated very plain and simple but then i will try to paraphrase them in in that particular poem to which i have referred today and i remember i i want to place him in the context of social hermeneutics because how do you interpret a creative person it depends whether you have been able to acquire that sensibility as always proposed by none other than mikhail bakhtin so whether if you know if you can touch upon the innate responsiveness of the poet or for that or or maybe any any author you will find that meaning such a verse for suit of meaning depends on to what extent that poet or author allows you to uh, prepare your own response to him your answerability so there is certain uh, i will be referring only to a very few only uh, to a few lines written by him scribbled by him অন্ধকারে জমিদারদের চিরস্থায়ী ববস্থাকে চরকের গাছে তুলে ঘুমায় গিয়েছে clear hint of uh satire you may say the vein of satire choroker gach i can translate it but then it will really re- uh, become uh, very much uh, un- un- uncommunicative really what is choroker gach it is a certain thing which is uh, n- very akin to a bengali reader but it will be very difficult to explain to non bengali readers ora khub beshi bhalo chilo na they were not very happy abu 
আজকের মন্নন্তর দাঙ্গা দুঃখ নিরক্ষরতায় অন্ধ শতচ্ছিন্ন গ্রাম্য প্রাণীদের চেয়ে পৃথক আর এক স্পষ্ট জগতের অধিবাসী ছিল হোয়াট আজ হি ওয়ান্ট টু টেল আস যে ইন কন্টেম্পোরারি টাইমস উই আর সাফারিং ফ্রম ফেমিন উই আর সাফারিং ফ্রম স্যাডনেস উই আর সাফারিং ফ্রম আওয়ার ওন লেকিং ইন আই I'm trying to explain it in a different way. And we are blind. Blindness is everywhere. Blindness is pervasive. And particularly upon those who remain in our rural society. They, but clearly, he says, they are inhabitants of a different world. And after that, Shati has already quoted, so I'll skipping it. Uh, half truth. We are being en- en- engulfed by half truth these days. And then he says, Srishti moner kotha mone hoye desh. If you look at, unfortunately, if you look at our own country these days, what you find? There is rampant examples of of hatred, of unqualified anger for all the other spaces. Those who are other are being automatically discarded. But Jivananda, in his own way, he uh, has felt it in, even in 1946, 47, is then i skip a few lines uh, and then i would try to take you to this expression e juge kothao kono alo kono kantimoy alo chokher shumukhe nei jatrike we are in a hopeless situation these days when there is no light no light kanti moy alo which is beautiful which is exceedingly well but for no wayfarers jatrik wayfarers there is nothing before them shei to nisrito andhkar ratrir maer moto very typical expression by jivanan mother of night or well, that night is archetypal night but when i and there are some other things he says after that the shabdahin mrittuhin andhakar ghire rakhe don't you think that jibanandu is actually skipping several generations and addressing us directly because right now we are being engulfed by soundless deathless spasm of darkness and jibrananda speaks of that darkness but that does not mean he is afraid of you know any possibility of illumination of light because in another place shati was referring to bela bela kal bela there is a very famous uh, expression he says that joy joy oloko runo doy joy victory to the dawn which is which is illumining illumining us so darkness is not monological in jibanan he believes in dialogues of life he believes in dialogues of existence and that's why he speaks of that and he says in the next poem manusher mrittu hole tobu manob theke jay and that manusher manob manush manush is also as uh, for all the non bengali listeners today i am explaining trying to explain rather if a person dies even then the humanity does not 
die. Humanity is never extinguished. So there you find real Jimunananda. And that gives us that uh, clue that we must learn to read Jibunananda in a different way every time. That is, every reading is a new reading, is a thorough rereading for Jibunananda. Be it poetry, be it his rather less read short stories, or the less read or big works to which she has alluded to, Shuti, like Shutirtho, like Malavan, like Jalpayati, and all that. So this is very interesting stuff. The poet who has fused dream and reality in uh, his first three, but or four, maybe uh, anthologies of poems by means of images, bringing together the most far-fetched elements in the elements as we find in the surrealist poets like, say, Paul Elgar or Louis Aragon, or for that matter, Adre Breto, though he was not a famous poet anyway, but Adre Breto, he were ever I am speaking, saying that. So, what I want to say that Jibunananda tries to express the unsaid things. That does not mean he wants to make everything abstract. No, never. Because he believes in the original silence which actually controls all the spoken words. These are being engulfed by all inarticulate, uh, inarticulate uh, space. Inarticulate space means Jibarananda, what does Jibarananda do then? He, through his poems, through his short stories, and to a certain extent, through his uh, bigger works also, he undertakes a raid on the inarticulate. But even then, he never forgets that his commitment is basically to his own society in which he is living. And not only his own society, but the time to come. And his weapon is only words, 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 and words, you know, the famous lines. Through the words, what does Jivanananda do? He makes the impossible possible. And he endow endows the nature, that is natural uh, artifacts with metaphysical properties. And then he completely changes them, completely transforms them. Why? Because he wants to discover the essence of existence. Not only human existence, but also the earthly existence. And while doing so, because he's a multidimensional creative personality, as I was trying to tell you, trying to suggest to you, that he uh, proposes a new worldview which blends the known with the unknown on the one hand, but at the same time, he ventures out to bring us down. Uh, yes, I will use that word use that uh, proposition, bring us down to the very earthliness of our existence. Because what matters most for him is commitment. Commitment. It is not an abstract thing. Many, uh, many an ordinary readers might uh, think that Jivanananda is concerned only with the 
obstructions. No. It is completely uh, to misjudge Jivanananda if we say like that. In fact, as I was telling you, Jivanananda even now baffles me. I have been like many other uh, readers in, uh, in our country or elsewhere. I've been reading Jivanananda for many years now. And I find that every time I am baffled because my earlier thinking uh, gets challenged by the new reading. A new synthesis of existence is created by Jivananda. And in that synthesis, you will find that abstraction ultimately does not matter because it tries to make concrete the ineffable dream of living a life which is worthy to live. And for that reason, why I am saying this? Let me offer you, in a, in a rather in a very briefly, a new uh, possibility of interpretation of Rupashi Bangla, to which we, our approach often remains uh, monodimensional. But it is not only exuberance that he expresses. It is not only his deep love for uh, and which uh, borders upon mystic uh, mysticism. But there is not uh, more than that. Because if you examine very closely, you will find that he is trying to make us aware of a life Sorry. There was a phone call from yeah. my own nephew. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so what I, I was trying to propose that individual solitude is there. There is no doubt. Music is there. And music is like magnet in him. Rather, I will say musicality. Because Kaiser, he is a musical person. And that's why I must be very careful while using the words. It is the musicality, the magnet of musicality that it contains. That is an ineffable dream. I am repeating my own words again. Because it, it proposes to establish a promised land. Perhaps he cannot do, he could not do rather. But is he really proposing in his oblique way to us? You are now undone, but try to establish the promised land if you want really to discover the absolute. And that absolute is not divorced from our life around, our society around. And that is what is most important. I know uh, uh, I have not spoken anything new, but this is what I feel these days. The Jibonananda has to be rediscovered every now and then. And Jibonananda, it, if there is any wrong notion regarding his poems or his creative personality, that he is not at all bothered about the immediate presence of Many uh, ugly problems. Well, ugliness does not find any uh, thoroughfare in his conception. But then he hints very subtly. Why? Because once that we understand them and then try to find a way through which we can cross over all this. And perhaps this is what Jibarananda means to us particularly when uh, to when we are now engrossed by all many and unfortunate developments in and around our society our surrounding our our present our presence 
is being wiped away, is being made absent. There is a struggle somewhere. And Jivananda helps us to pinpoint the struggle, the character of the struggle, and what we are supposed to do. So with these words, I call it a day or call it a night. Uh, um, so thank you once again, Kaisa, for giving me some chance to share some of my stray thoughts with you today, tonight. Rather. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tobudir, Tobudir Da, uh, for this beautiful talk. Uh, this is a humble request to the audiences. I know that you are leaving such a great feedback, uh, um, but we can't read because uh, we are um, quite rushing for the time, actually chasing. Yeah, sorry. Time. So, uh, one thing that uh, um, this is for non Bengali audiences, non Bengali readers. Jivananda is labeled perhaps as a surrealist poet, but there are so many surrealist poets. Surrealist poet, you can't judge a surrealist poet because anything, anything, anyone talks from subconscious mind, we just, we just label them as a, a surrealist poet. But that doesn't yeah. reflect the power some, someone no. has. But Jivananundo, mm. the images he created, it's just uh, not mundane uh, and so powerful that this is a treasure uh, for any readers, and especially uh, Eric is here, and Eric knows my fascination for mm. Bergman. So he is the Bergman in poetry. So Bergman, if you if you just classify Bergman just as a when you when you perhaps watch his uh, The Hour of Wolves, and if you just classify count him or class him as as just a surrealist filmmaker, that is not enough, because the world, the universe, he delineated through uh, the uh, groundbreaking film called uh, mm. The Hour of Wolves is just something beyond surrealism, the images he created. Beyond. So Jivananda yeah. is definitely one of those. Uh, we have two more speakers. Uh, uh, so Manjurisam, this is quite late night in Bangladesh and many thanks to our speakers who, perhaps because, because of the fascination for Jivananda, you managed to uh, stay awake till that late night in in uh, okay. Indian subcontinent. And listen to what Honestly, you do like is you know. hard uh, uh, Many thanks, Oz, uh, for for joining as part of this festival. Not just joining your great support in the promotion of this festival through Leeds Trinity University. Uh, I uh, I am really grateful. Uh, for this. Uh, so, Oz Hardwick uh, is the next speaker, is a European poet, academic, philosopher, and official uh, musician whose work has been published and performed internationally, internationally in and on diverse media. His prose, poetry, chapbook, Learning to Have Lost, a uh, one the 2019 Rubery International Book Award for Poetry. And his most recent publication is the prose poetry sequence, Wolf Planet. He has also edited or co-edited several anthologies, including the Bali Press Anthology of Yorkshire Poetry uh, with Miles Salter, which was UK National Poetry Day recommendation and the Bali Press Anthology of Prose Poetry with Anne Caldwell. Oz is Professor of English Literature at, Le at Leeds Trinity University, where he leads the postgraduate creative writing programs. So a warm welcome, Oz, and many thanks for joining. Over to you. Your own interpretation of reading Jivananda. Well, uh, thank you so much and hello from Leeds Trinity University in the north of England, or, or rather my small office at home. And thank you so much for, again, for inviting me to contribute. I'm, I'm honoured to have been invited to contribute to the festival. 
um, but should begin by admitting that I'm very nervous. Speaking amongst such esteemed scholars and artists with such a depth of knowledge. I have um, a certain reputation in some small circles as a poet and academic, but I must stress that in neither, neither field is my expertise overly pertinent to today's celebration in some ways. But what I can offer today is the response of an avid reader of poetry, of someone for whom, um, since childhood really, words on the page have been as vivid and alive as the life going on around me. Even this approach, however, is circumscribed as I'm a reader in translation. Now, as a, as a scholar of medieval English literature, I'm acutely aware of the impossibility of translation, which was addressed by the last speaker. So much is inevitably lost. The subtleties of wordplay and the overt and subtle rhythms, not only that the poet uses, but of the language itself. They're impossible to reproduce exactly and indeed new sounds and rhythms may shift emphases entirely. And I know from reading translations of my own work and having worked with an Italian poet to translate their work into English, that the specific and idiomatic in one language can lead to either oversimplification or um, obscurity in translation or indeed both simultaneously. Which is all to make the rather obvious point that translated poetry, and here's a translated um, collection that I've been reading, is not a direct representation of the original. Rather, it's a complex intertext of theme and image. And I think the, when I was thinking about it, I think the image that sticks in my mind is it's as if the poem is shouted into a vast cave with all its competing echoes, some sharply distinct and others perhaps even misheard, with the listener making what they can of their own idea of the whole. And this new whole, though most likely formed around the clearest, loudest images of the poem, takes shape in a mind that's formed in what are often very different circumstances, cultural, geographical, temporal, and so on, to those in which the original was written. And this is how I read Jivananda Das, sitting with a book at the mouth of a cave that stretches back 5,000 miles to where some of you are today, and more than 70 years. And the voice that echoes to me from that distance speaks, yes, of the travails of an individual poet in unique and frequently difficult circumstances in the first half of the 20th century. But more than this, it speaks to me of the world I inhabit here in the north of England on this day in February 2021. And this immediacy, I think, and I was looking for particular examples, and given that I've just got sort of 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes, I, I thought I'd take one particular example from the poem which is translated as near and far. And I quote, man has lived long on earth, yet his shadow on the wall seems only to signal death, loss and fear. But for this nothingness, there is little else on the shores of time. Yet around man's plans, failed thoughts, resolves and phantoms, rises another world made gentle with the sound of multifarious trees. It's a poem that speaks of the transitory nature of human life set against the persistence of the natural world. More specifically, when taken in splendid um, uh, Bactinian isolation um, uh, from authorial ownership, the message which forms with all of the concise energy and intensity that only poetry can express speaks of our world now, 
how after five or seven million years on the planet, we are still more foe than friend to ourselves, and how around our fleeting existence, which seems to us to be so important and all-consuming, nature will thrive, oblivious to our vain strivings and ambitions. In the 21st century, there is, of course, an obvious eco-political reading of this, which encompasses mankind's blinkered hubris and the damage we have done to our environment, the death, loss and fear that's referred to in the poem, which counterbalance even our proudest achievements, along with the knowledge that, although we may destroy many species of flora and fauna, including ourselves, in our absence, the planet will renew itself in some form without our interference. But there's something I think more than that at the moment, something that speaks more precisely to this narrower historical moment that we all share. In December 2020, there was an article in the New Yorker on the role of poetry in times of crises. Claire Bucknell in that um, article wrote of the importance of poetry anthologies uh, to record what she referred to as the historical moment seen long-sightedly. I personally have a number of anthologies of poems which have already been produced from different parts of the world during the pandemic and some of them I've contributed to and there will no doubt be many more as we carry on uh, moving through this period of crisis. Considering the circumstance of the current global health emergency, Bucknell notes that in her article, pandemics are disconcerting because they reveal that people are not only more similar than they like to think, but in some essential ways, identical, made up of the same cells, the same weaknesses. And I believe that Gibbon Ananda's poem from which I've quoted could easily have been written today for such an anthology. Because what does survive the vagaries of translation, and I think this can be said of a, a lot of his work more broadly, is that core humanity in them. The same cells, the same weaknesses, um, to, to quote Bucknell. The past years seen as thrown into ongoing periods of uncertainty, loss, lockdown and disruption, not only to our future plans, but also to our sense of our present selves and our immediate relationships, communities and environments. Yet, as the poem reminds us, I'll quote once again, around man's plans, failed thoughts, resolves and phantoms, rises another world made gentle with the sound of multifarious trees. During the pandemic, the air around the world has been clearer. We've heard more bird song. Wild animals have strayed further into our cities and it's wonderful to, to see these strange incursions even in the center of my little town in a little city in North Yorkshire. We see more foxes in the streets and things. And Jim and Anders' poem shows us the historical moment seen long-sightedly, which is um, that phrase um, invoked earlier of poetry in times of crisis in anthologies. It's a poem that doesn't offer the certainties and consolations which religion may offer. But in spite of that, there's a kind of deep spirituality in it which informs his perspective, presented as observation rather than doctrine. And through translation, whatever may be lost of the original's music and the intricacies of the art, and it's been wonderful hearing some of that, and also hearing readings that I've just been able to enjoy the original language um, but whatever's lost in that translation this is something that resonates profoundly with me this spirituality free of doctrine about what it is to be human within the the 
the natural world. And it resonates with me as I sit at the mouth of that figurative cave I invoked earlier on, which is actually a small room full of books in the north of Yorkshire. In the third UK lockdown, speaking here to diverse individuals from around the world who yet share the same cells, the same weaknesses, and lest we forget the same poetry, which as this book does to me, can speak to us all. And thank you for inviting me to share those thoughts with you. Great. <clears throat> thank you again, Oz, uh, for your uh, beautiful interpretation on uh, your reading. Yuvanando and your exploration of Yuvanando's work. Uh, we are reaching our, we are just going to the end of today's session uh, uh, with the last speaker, uh, Sayyid Manjur Islam. Many, many thanks to all of our audiences who are watching. After this session, uh, this thread will be terminated, but again, in about uh, 10 minutes time, we will reappear in the same page show the Bangla Music Festival. So please uh, stay tuned. Uh, uh, this, the next session is the photographic interpretation of Jivananando uh, and then some musical interpretation of Jivananando. Then uh, another reinterpretation of Jivananando's work uh, through some profound talk and uh, Professor Asghar Hussain uh, from USA and uh, Dr. Shahad Zaman, a award-winning writer, will join uh, after after this session. So please uh, please stay tuned for the next session. Our next speaker is a, is a public a prominent public intellectual in Bangladesh, Sir Manjur Islam, a progressive uh, uh, public inter intellectual, I should say. Uh, um, Sayyid Manjur Islam is a Bangladeshi critic, writer, and a former professor of Dhaka University. As a literary critic, he has written criticism on uh, writers, including Michael Madhusudan Dutto, Kaji Manjur Islam, Shudindranath Dutto, Shamosh Shen, uh, and Shamsul Rahman. He received Bangla Academy Award, Literary Award in 1996 and his 2005 in and his 2005 short stories collection Prem o Prakthana Golpo was Prathamala's book of the year. <coughs> he became the president of Pen Bangladesh uh, in January 2018. Uh, the audiences who follow Bengali literature, especially the prose writing, fiction writing, Sayyid Manjur Sam, uh, the name of Sayyid Manjur Sam is uh, um, almost um, so popular and um, you know is, is not uh, what I meant actually is not unfamiliar uh, to the world even even from non Bengali uh, for non Bengali audiences. Uh, so our next speaker is uh, Sir Manjur Sam, and over to you, Manjur Bhai, for your own interpretation on reading Jivanamdo, and many many thanks for joining. Uh, uh, as part of this festival. This is truly an honor to have you. Uh, Thank you very much. It's uh, my pleasure taking part uh, in this festival and listen to some uh, delightful presentations. Um, I'm not sure about the format because you first told me that you'd be asking questions, I'd be answering these questions. Now I see that you have throwing the whole responsibility to on, to, on us to decide our topic. Anyway, I understand. I will perhaps, uh, I will perhaps come. Um, that's okay. Uh, I, I don't want to break the, uh, the, the yeah. structure that you have built. Okay. So I will speak uh, loosely in about 10 minutes time on two or three things that you tossed around. First of all, um, Jivananda Dadash in his own time, uh, his modernism, uh, there are lots of debates on his modernism because we know that in uh, Bangla literature, uh, modernism had been differently interpreted by different writers and poets. Uh, it, it's, it's very natural because you do not have one particular brand of modernism. One size fits all is not something that we associate with literary movements. 
Um, and then um, I'll probably talk about why he's so relevant today. It was, I was listening with uh, great pleasure to what Professor Hardik was talking about and how Jivan Andudash is still so relevant today in the pandemic times. Uh, it's true that I have read him a couple of times, even before this festival was announced, just to find um, any illusions, illusions to a time like this. And you can believe me, there are plenty of illusions to situations in which you struggle for meaning and you see the whole world in a kind of disconnect. Um, and so he is relevant, no question about that. Now, when we speak about Jivan Anandudash, I'll just describe him as JD, which would be much better. Um, the time that he lived in, you have to really understand his relationship with a group of other poets who were more or less his uh, same age. They were all born uh, at the time, at the turn of the uh, 20th century. Uh, he was the first, and then Ramendra Mitra probably was the youngest of the crowd. I'm not very sure about the biographical details, but Buddha Dev Boshu, Vishnu Dev, uh, Shudhinana Dattu, Jivaranu Das, Premendra Mitra, they all formed the core modernist group of Bengali poets who came of age in the late 1920s and formed around a group, they formed a group called Kollal Group. Uh, so this is known as the Kollal era. Uh, this is synonymous with the advent of modernism, literary modernism in Bengali literature, particularly poetry. But look at the time in between, the impacts, the, the impacts that were definitely felt in his life from the events and um, situations of his own time. First of all, the um, First World War. They all lived through the First World War and um, encountered uh, the post-World War crisis of reason as all these enlightenment ideals uh, crumbled. Uh, you, you just, so the crisis that engulfed the, situ the, the civilization of the time, how did they respond to that particular crisis? And it was not simply a Western European crisis. It was a crisis which was also felt everywhere in the world. That is the first thing. And then the second thing they all faced was a rising anti-colonial movement in Bengal and in India. And then of course, the thickening of the political situation in the 1920s, when Gandhi led the Shatagraho and other movements, and all these had impacts on the minds of these people. And then came the advent of literary modernism and modernism, not simply in literature, but also in painting. And surprisingly, it is Rabindranath Tagore was one of the first abstract expressionists of the time. And he was accepted as one. One of the reasons why he was not promoted in the West was, first of all, his criticism of nationalism, but also his understanding of expressionism in his painting, which clashed with the image that he had built of himself. The Western world had an either or situation in terms of Rabindranath Tagore, taking, has, taking as a medieval um, uh, rishi or a hermit poet, or taking as a modern writer who challenged very strong foundations of Western thinking, such as nationalism, the Western idea of the uh, enlightenment logic, which circulated for a very long time, or even the Western idea of money. I'll come to that in a minute. And this was also something that Jivananand Dash had to inherit and uh, calibrate in his uh, literary works and all these. And the last one they had to contend with all these uh, poets was the overarching influence of Rabindranath Tagore with his brand of his own brand of romanticism and his religious spiritual uh, ideas, which were very prominent in his poems and songs, but also in his dramas. 
not so much in his novels. And so uh, one thing he had to really think about, Kivaranud Dash, he had more or less three or four prominent aims in his life, not spelled very uh, particularly, but he felt the pressure of all these different aims he had for himself. First of all, to chart a distance from Rabindranath Tagore, with him, with whom he had a kind of a Oedipal relationship, a kind of father figure who dominated everything. And that was something that he uh, very actively did. He did really chart his way away from Tagore and his brand of romanticism. Second thing he wanted to do was to create a Bengali modernism in Bengali literary modernism, which would not be a copy of the Western modernism. It would be something that reflected the social, political, cultural, and other uh, particularities of a particular situation and time. And the last thing he did was to include both his home and the world in the very large canvas that he built for himself. He was not simply somebody who wrote about his own country. You will find references to Greek history, to Mesopotamian history, to medieval uh, legends. His net was cast very wide. The other thing you will find is his modernism was something that I see in John Donne or even Shakespeare, how the spirit of inquiry, the accent on exploration and his new cartography, which is not simply map making, but also include the accounts people left, the stories people told about different experiences in different parts of the world. So the advantage for this man was the poet Jivananud Dash was, he could collect all the wisdoms from all these places and then include them, fuse them into his own version of myths or legend. So this is one thing that you have to really think about. The other two things uh, I like to uh, briefly mention is um, Jivananandu Dashi's understanding of post-colonial reality of his time. It's not simply the colonial reality, because we know that colonialism and post-colonialism go hand in hand. I teach this course in one of my uh, undergraduate classes, and I begin by reading The Tempest, which is not something which is periodically, which falls into a post-colonial times. But Shakespeare could foresee how the world was moving and how slavery, for example, colonialism, for example, denial of language rights and other things would be the aspect that every civilization will have to deal with. And he knew the centers of power would expand and then engulf the whole world into a kind of a sameness of approach in which other cultures would be considered marginalized or inferior. Uh, Edward Said has given us the phrase, given as a term orientalism. And this is something that defines the West's attitude towards the East. Now, I was I'm a bit surprised by the kind of bubble in which the modernist poets place themselves. I do not see the strong anti-colonial sentiment in any of their poems. I'm not saying that every poet has to be an activist, but we have examples. Kazi Nazrul Islam, who has cast a great influence on the first collection of his poems, Jora Palo, the shed feathers or uh, dropped feathers. In that book, he was, in fact, remember, he was trying to chart his distance from Tagore and found in Nazrul a way of getting out of that influence. But he knew it was going to be a short-lived influence. If you read Bishara Palov, you have the phrases, you have even musical lines coming out of Nazrul Islam, Mohit Lal Mojumdar, and Shatanunad Dato, the three poets who really place themselves at a distance from Tagore. Not that Tagore minded, he welcomed people to chart their differences from their, cast their differences from him. So the initial reaction of Jivan Anud Dash was, he wanted to be different. That's absolutely all right. But look at the other poets. Um, they did, in doing so, they were going into a brand of modernism 
which was to some extent an imitation of the past. Shomorsen, one of my favorite poets, has written poems in which in the streets of Calcutta, you have cactus, you have sand dunes, the whole of wasteland imagery transplanted into the streets of Calcutta. We realize the city, of course, is the locus of modernism. And you have to deal with the city if you are dealing with modernism. But India at the time was not an urban center. It did not have a very, very vast urban center the like, the like of London or New York or any other Western metropolis. So essentially, we're dealing with modernism of the mind. And that is what Jivananod Dash gave. Because if you look at the, his treatment of the city, which is very, very ambiguous. For one thing, the city comes quite late in his opus. Is a third or fourth of his collection, the city becomes a bit prominent. But look at what he is doing. He is neither engulfed by the city, or nor is he locating him, himself heart and soul in the city. He is in fact maintain, maintaining a critical distance from the city. And I'll give you two or three lines to just to show you how he um, dealt with the city. One of the poems tells you about uh, Calcutta has risen again, although one day it will die. He even talks about the demise of the city. What kind of a city is seeing a demise of? A city which, is, which makes everyone emotional the kind of city that Prufok finds so alienating. The city which is um, a negative presence, something which dwarfs individuals, that city will ultimately perish. And in that very point, he has cast his history in 3,000 years cycle. And that is one thing um, that probably Professor Oz was talking about when you look at the historical moment from a very long sighted, in a very long sighted way. That is what he did. He looked at all historical moments from a very long sighted, in a very long sighted way. So Indian history merges with the history of the Middle East, the history of the rest of the world. Why is he doing that? Because he knows that history of a particular nation is something that will probably merge the history of other nations. A particular history lives for a time frame. A war comes and a new history begins. But the history of man is an old history in which you have points of contact. You have imaginary uh, zones created in which people collect con contact with each other. You have communication in which you have hearts coming together, minds coming together, mm -hmm. dreams are shared, progress is made. And this is why he challenged the whole idea of a Renaissance understanding of man. Surprising, even today we are not really finding the true meaning of the Renaissance man. That man was not a woman. So half of humanity gone. That man was white. So rest of the colors are gone. That man was elite. That man was educated. So he's about 1% of humanity. How can you say that he's a representative figure for all humanity. He challenged that. His man, one of the poems, uh, I think Tapodidha or Swati has uh, pointed out, uh, man dies, but man survives. Manus manob That manob is his man. And that manob is not somebody who lives in the city, not somebody who is a flaneur, walks and is tired of the cityscape and he feels alienated. That man is essentially romantic in heart, at heart. Somebody who is replenished by the flow of seasons, by the flow of time. So time is not something that creates anxiety in Jivan Anundadash. It does create anxiety in the Western poets. One of the problems of modernism is the anxiety factor. Another problem of modernism is a sense of rootlessness. The, 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 um, the villages are gone out of the, uh, the, uh, the, the map. But Jivan Anundo, his city seamlessly blends with nature. He talks about a city for a few minutes, 
and then goes into nature. And this is something that he talks about is if a motor car is always a thing of darkness. A motor car is a thing of darkness. And then he talks about a city, and this is almost like Yeats's, uh, um, the, the, the Isle of Inchfi, uh, the, the Lake Isle of Inchfi, where he says, let us, um, uh, I will arise and go now. Uh, I forgot the, the, exactly the whole lines. But this is the poem he writes about, the whole day trams and buses, the cry of vendors, lepers on roads. But where is the smell of beans? Where are the Shama bars? Look at the lost world he likes to reconnect with. The lost world he wants to discover. That is the locus of this particular poem. That's why his poems are reassuring because of their presence of spirit of inquiry. As something that tries to search out a, a living presence that likes to inquire include everyone else in its own being. There has been a talk about surrealism of Jivananda Dash. Surrealism has an anxiety of time. You know, I think I, I read Andre Breton for a while, the two manifestos he created. The First World War was a leveler. It destroyed many of the old assumptions, many of the old certainties, and then you have to begin again. So surrealism gave it an escape, humanity an escape. Something like a painting by Mark Chagall, where the cow flies in the sky. Mm. Because nostalgia has to be revived, memory has to be revived, and dreams have to be revived, and dreams do not have any logical sequence. But Jivananda Daj doesn't really write in the Western surrealistic mode. It's more like magic realist of the Latin American writers. Mm -hmm. Two realities exist side by side. They do not cancel each other out. Rather, they bring the best in each. A reassuring presence. An alternative reality you can step into and not find difficult to adjust. It's a parallel existence, which is something that flows through everyone in our childhood stories that we, that we, that we heard, the fairy tales that we have read, the old grandmother's tales that we have all heard. Mm -hmm. That world has to be rescued. Um, that world has to be understood as a continuous refurbishment of the present. So his surrealism yeah. is a homegrown idea. It is not something which is brought from the West. Let me finish by saying a few things about his um, uh, modernism. Last two things. Um, um, okay, we all know that modernism has been a crisis of representation. <clears throat> we know that crisis of reason, we also know that, and the crisis of self. Uh, all three accounts, you will find Jivan Anandu giving his own impression. What is this representation? Representation of, in the Western sense, identity, agency, individuals, race, ethnicity, women, his basic idea of representation is a representation of the truth of imagination and the truth of history and the imagination of history. History has truth and history has imagination. The brute matter of geno genocide has truth, which so much destroys our belief in humanity. But if you believe in the imagination of this brute matter of genocide, you realize there was one person who tried to help another. Mm -hmm. Even at the moment of death, mm -hmm. somebody decided to die first so that the other person can die next. That is the imagination of that particular event. And the truth of history always clashes with the imagination of history. He never went for the truth of history. And that is the graceful moment of exit for Jivan Anandutash into a parallel universe, which is more vibrant, more dynamic than anything else. And what is the crisis of reason? It's a Western reason, of course. Material world to be understood in terms of material logic and reason. Nietzsche talks about the idea of instinct taking over reason. When instinct can also be very positive, mm -hmm. just as Foucault's power can also be productive. 
Jivan Anandu's idea of all these um, supernatural, for example, or this surrealism. Uh, th this is the realm of the very positive inter interconnection between man and nature. Mm -hmm. And that is what he talks about. And the last thing, mm -hmm. the crisis of self. And you are not a representative individual who is speaking for the whole of civilization. You are just one of the participants of the civilization. Jivan Anandu's nature is one thing which takes you as a participant as well as a spectator. Mm -hmm. Now, this dual function is very important for mm -hmm. you. Wherever you read, whenever you read his poems, you cannot simply be a reader. You have to be a participant in the expanding universe that he has. So thank you very much. With these words, I will finish. But we can go on and on. He is such a great poet. Now. Exactly. Exactly, so, uh, Manjur Bhai. This was such a profound uh, introduction. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't introduce anything except very sort of stray <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> very broken phrases and everything. No, no, they, you, you have to really struggle to make very, meaning of things that are so ephemeral, isn't it? So elusive. Especially for, for non-Bengali audiences, I'm sure uh, that your, uh, you know, this this profound talk and uh, your profound way of exploring Jibunanandu. I hope I didn't uh, sound any alarm bell. <laughs> no, 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 well, uh, uh, this is, uh, I, um, I felt actually a bit, uh, uh, I mean, this is quite harsh to stop uh, in this point because we have another. No, 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 I, I, I understand. After this, uh, Manzir Bhai, that your, your, your speech was so profound. And, Manzir Bhai, Oshadharan. <laughs> And a oh, lot, lot of comments are, are in our stream, you know, live stream. No, no. Unfortunately, I can't. But many, many thanks, Monsur Bhai, again. Uh, this was quite important. That's why uh, we needed you in this festival. Uh, and I'm sure uh, this profound talk will inspire and instigate many leaders to read uh, Jivarananda uh, with, with profound interest. So many thanks, Monsur Bhai, again. Many thanks, Oz. Uh, firstly for your contribution and secondly for huge support and involving uh, Lee Street University uh, in this festival. Uh, many thanks again, Eric. Wonderful. What a wonderful uh, reading. I look forward for tomorrow, actually. Uh, you will read again some more Jivananda's poem uh, with the visual interpretation through Dan. Thank uh, you. I would just like to say that I would dearly love to talk to Professor Islam for a long time. I had some uh, some thoughts came up about Shakespeare uh, and also Garcia Lorca. Yeah. Um, but there's no time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe some other time. Many thanks. Yes, so we, we can always, we can connect sometime, exactly. Eric, and okay. we can talk about Lorca is another of my favorite poets. Exactly. I've, just, worked, what, I've worked on the last one really about this man. We surely will. Uh, anyway. Uh, Shatide, many, many thanks again. Uh, uh, but uh, thank you, thank you, thank you and so much. Thanks. And thank you. Thank you, Shatide. Uh, Good yeah. to hear you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, oh, Professor Oz. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Kaiser Guy. And thank you, ma'am. Ma'am is listening still now. <laughs> thank you. The Minister of Education of Bangladesh is still there and listening yeah. to profound interest. A, uh, many thanks. Uh, uh, Dr. Thank Dr. you so much for giving me this opportunity to, to be part of this wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward Thank to meeting you, you again. Um, in, in some of the events, actually. And many thanks for your contribution. Thank you. So uh, we'll have, um, the next session is a, a musical and photographic interpretation of Jibananda's poetry. Uh, we will stop the live streaming for just five minutes, but we will reappear. So those who are watching now, uh, please take five minute rest, and then we'll come back again uh, with uh, that introduction, that uh, interpretation, photographic interpretation, and musical interpretation. And then we'll have, uh, again, uh, reintroduction of Jivananda's work through some profound talk. So uh, have a wonderful rest of the evening who are watching and many thanks to our uh, distinguished speakers uh, who helped uh, and who gave a uh, really insightful talk. And it was quite insightful for myself, I can assure. So thank you, Manzurbhai again. Thank you, Oz again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
Look okay. forward to meeting you again, Manjubhai. Thank you. Yeah. And Professor Hardik, great listening to you. Oh, yes. Maybe some other time we'll be listening to you more.